in the first half last week in Pittsburgh. James Stewart is also enjoying a breakthrough sophomore season. He's a 235-pound wrecking ball with sprinter speed. And Dexter Siegler is one of the nation's premier defensive backs and part of a dominating hurricane defense. It has been a disappointing campaign for Coach Doug Graber and his Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Just four wins through nine games. Former Kane quarterback Brian Forte is just a spectator today as Rutgers and Miami battle next on Sunshine Network. Sunshine Network proudly presents University of Miami Hurricanes football. Third Reich Miami is back in the national championship picture. And this afternoon, the Hurricanes back at the Orange Bowl, where they have won 55 games in a row. It's a Big East football battle today. 7-1 Miami against 4-5 Rutgers. The Scarlet Knights have lost three in a row and five of their last seven. This could be a long day for them. And we hope a good day for all of you. And good afternoon from the Orange Bowl, everyone. Eric Reed, delighted to be with you and alongside former Dolphin great Nat Moore. Well, Nat, the Canes had an easy time last week at Pittsburgh, rolling up to another huge win led by a dominating Miami defense. Well, that defense is just un unbelievable. You're talking about a defense that has 38 sacks, that got, had nine last week versus Pittsburgh, and they only need 14 more to break the record. But the key to that sack attack is a guy by the name of Kedron Patrick, who, la who leads with seven and a half sacks. Last week he had one and a half sacks and uh, eight tackles. As you see him fighting off the blocker to come down with the uh, tackle here. Matt, Kevin Patrick, and the rest of those Hurricane front people highly motivated to break that single-season record coming with the sacks. And the Miami offense has been energized by sophomore quarterback Ryan Collins and revved up with a juiced-up running game led by three players, a three-pronged attack, juniors Donnell Bennett and Larry Jones, sophomore James Stewart. The Canes can hammer you times three. Yeah, that's three big bruising backs that uh, will punish the tackler. And here we take a look at Larry Jones last week versus Pittsburgh as he goes 88 yards. He does a good job of reading his blocks, but look at him break the tackle, and then he shows the speed that these three big guys have as he goes the distance for the touchdown. Great it, run. Interesting that Larry Jones, no more than eight carries in any game this year. He has made the most of his limited work. Been a difficult season for Rutgers and their head coach, Doug Graber. Seven wins a year ago, but just four through nine weeks this year. And this week, to make matters worse, Doug Graber had to suspend four players, three defensive starters on a unit that's already been decimated. Yeah, three defensive backs that uh, really will hurt them today. But, you know, anytime you break team policy, there there is a penalty that you must pay. Pay and it's going to hurt their defense uh, tremendously. Right spot for Rutgers this year. Their running game, redshirt freshman Terrell Willis leads the Big East, seventh in the nation in rushing. Well, Terrell Willis is a good one. He is a freshman that has the, the ability to get outside, and you know he's rushed for close. He's rushed for over a thousand yards, matter of fact, this year. Well, Miami transfer Brian Forte is the backup to quarterback Ray Lucas. This is a very athletic young man. This is a young man with a lot of athletic ability, similar to Ryan Collins, but he also throws the ball with a lot of accuracy. His only problem is he's prone to the INT, and that's what he must stay away from today for the uh, Rutgers team to be successful. Well, all season long, Joe Rose has been down on the sidelines for us, and again this afternoon. Well, it's a beautiful day here at the Orange Bowl. It's <laughs> I'm glad to be back home, I can tell you, after last week in Pittsburgh, that cold weather. I think everybody obviously excited about being back home again. The word here for the University of Miami today is no letdowns. They're 34-point favorites today for today's ball game. I think it's very important they come out and they get to take care of their own business today. Second of all, I think it's important, and some of the players have been asking, what's the score to the Florida State-Notre Dame game? And also, not to look ahead to next week's West Virginia game, which is going to be a crucial game, of course. So for now, Rutgers on the other side of the field, the one thing they want to do is play one play at a time, play a lot of young guys today, just give it their best effort. They know what they're in for. It is a gorgeous afternoon here at the Orange Bowl in Miami, just perfect for a homecoming weekend at the university and your matchup between Miami and Rutgers with the opening kickoff next. Orange Bowl in 
in Miami, Florida, one of the great home fields in college football today. The Hurricanes bring a 55-game Orange Bowl winning streak into their homecoming matchup today with a Rutgers team that hopes they can equip themselves well. Eric Reed with Nat Moore and Joe Rose, the Canes and the Scarlet Knights today. Miami hoping not to look past this game toward West Virginia, which is looming a week from today. And the Hurricanes rank third, very much alive in the national championship picture, depending on the outcome of games elsewhere. But Nat, first things first, the Canes want to take care of business and win convincingly today. Yeah, they've got to stay focused. They've got to stay focused on what's at hand today. Uh, everything that is happening, happening up in uh, South Bend doesn't mean a thing if they let today's game get away from them. They've got to win each and every game and let things take their course and have a shot at the end for the national championship. L.A. postcard afternoon here in Miami. Beautiful day, 84 degrees, a wind out of the southwest at 15, partly cloudy and not as warm and humid as it has been earlier in the season. This is the first meeting ever between these two Big East rivals. The Scarlet Knights and the Hurricanes meeting for the first time. Rutgers Scarlet Knights have won the toss, and they will receive the opening kickoff. Duck Graber is the head coach at Rutgers. He's 49 years old, and in his fourth year as their head coach, former defensive coordinator in the NFL with Tampa Bay, and the secondary coach for the Kansas City Chiefs. He is hoping to rebuild a Rutgers program that won seven games a year ago, but has struggled this season. And Dennis Erickson, in his fifth season at Miami, he's won 51 and lost five with the Hurricanes, 101 career wins as a 12th year head coach. Dennis Erickson, he's done a terrific job at Miami. And his Hurricanes are ranked third in the country. And Dennis Erickson said this week, delighted to move up in both polls. Well, it's, it's really exciting for us because it, it, you talk to our players after our loss to Florida State about opportunities, opportunities if you continue to be successful. And uh, if we continue to be successful, then we got a chance to, to maybe play for the national championship. And that's what it's all about, the winning the Big East and playing for the national championship. A couple of remarkable numbers concerning Dennis Erickson. He is 28-0 at the Orange Bowl. And that this man has never lost in November is Miami teams a perfect 15 and 0 in the month of November. And he should be able to continue that record today as long as he can keep his team focused and and playing good football because they've got to get better each week if they're going to be there at the end of the year and be able to compete and win the national championship. Terrell Willis to the left, Bailey to the right, and Scott Barnwell, the senior from Hollywood, Florida, gets us underway. And this is the red shirt freshman Terrell Willis from the 10. And Willis to the 30-yard line. That's where Rutgers will take over first down and 10. Stop the by Gibson and Richard. We know where he kick off return. So Rutgers will get the football first and go with starting quarterback Ray Lucas. He's a sophomore. He started seven times this year, four times a year ago as a freshman. And right now, with Brian Forte injured, he is firmly the number one quarterback for Rutgers. He's the number one quarterback, but he also has a good, strong arm and a good completion percentage. He's just, as I said earlier, got to stay away from the uh, turnover and INT. He's got to, you know, read the defense before he lets it go. You saw Carlos Jones being helped off for Miami on first down big running room for Bruce Presley the 215 pound sophomore from Highland Park New Jersey Bruce and Presley a very fine running back averaging better than six and a half yards a carry At Marley, the game is high. second down Bailey one. Presley Brantley the leading receiver and Battaglia a good tight end just a sophomore Damon and Vaughn, your most experienced offensive linemen at the tackle spots. Ladies and gentlemen, join the excitement of Big East basketball. On first down, Ray Lucas giving it off to Bruce Presley, who picks up eight yards. And another hurricane being walked off. Terrace Harris, the free safety, shaken up. A big hole for Bruce Presley, who gained over 800 yards last year. Nat was the Big East Rookie of the Year, and in a way, he's taken a backseat to the freshman Terrell Willis this year. Well, he's been a little slow this year. He's had some injuries, missed a couple ball games, but uh, he's back in the starting lineup today. Second down and one for Rutgers. Brantley in motion. And again, Presley, he has the first down. 
So Bruce Presley going straight ahead and picking up the first first down of our game today. Good start for the Scarlet Knights, but uh, Miami uh, has got to stay focused defensively. They've got to come out. They might be thinking a little bit more about that sack record instead of stopping the run. And to get that sack record, they've got to stop the run on first and second down and force them into a passing situation where those defensive linemen can come after the quarterback. And you've seen the defensive starters for Miami. Right now, Earl Little in for Terrace Harris at free safety. On first down, again, Rutgers stays on the ground. This time it's Bill Bailey who gets just a yard or two. Bailey brought down by number 71, Kenny Lopez, and the middle linebacker, number 49, Robert Bass. Bill Bailey, a senior, he's only carried it 22 times this year, but look at the numbers, over nine yards a pop for Beetle Bailey. Well, it's almost a surprise any time the fullback gets, a, gets the ball in this offense because they've got such great tailbacks, but uh, as you can see, when he carries the mail, he carries it well. Second down and seven. And Ray Lucas with Willis and Presley bookending him out of the shotgun. Lucas on the roll, being chased, and finally going down. Earl Little, the free safety, and Robert Bass, the linebacker, stopping Lucas as he got back to the line of scrimmage. Nat Moore, what does Rutgers have to do to stay in this football game? Well, they've got to control the football. They've got to be able to stay away from the turnovers. They've got to be able to establish the run, keep that Miami defense on the field, keep that Miami offense off the field. If they can do this, then they've got a chance to be successful today. Well, those are Rutgers' keys to winning. The Scarlet Knights losing last week 58-22 to at West Virginia. Three straight losses for Ray Lucas and Rutgers. And the third down and six. Deep drop. They set the screen up, and Presley juggled it and then finally drops it. That could be a fumble. Well, they rule it an incomplete pass, and that's got to be frustrating for Bruce Presley, who has caught 16 footballs this year. Had he held on, Rutgers would have still been driving with a first down. Yeah, they had a big play there. They, they set up the middle screen. It was wide open. Miami bit took the bait, but he just didn't come down with the catch. Should have been an easy catch. Should have been a big game for the uh, Scarlet uh, Knights. Nick Sheremetta. A sophomore from Colonia, New Jersey, will punt it to freshman Jamie German, who waits at the Miami 16-yard line. Plenty of time as Sheremetta hangs it high. Fair catch called for by German, and he will watch it bounce inside the 20 and down to the 17-yard line. A 37-yard punt. No score. Three minutes into our football game at the Orange Bowl. Welcome back here in Miami. Rutgers having the punt on their first drive and the Hurricanes coming to bat. Not yet three minutes into our homecoming football game today. As we take another look back, you look at your screen right here in the middle, you see it's a perfect pass. He just tried to run with it before he got possession of it. And uh, he still almost came down with the catch, but he was never able to put it away and it was ruled an incomplete pass instead of a fumble. Miami takes over first and 10, their own 17-yard line. The sophomore Ryan Collins to Donnell Bennett, and he will lose two back at the 15-yard line. Andrew Beckett, the nose tackle, right there as Bennett got the football. So Ryan Collins, a sophomore out of Pembroke Pines, Ilea Miami Lakes High School, and uh, he has done an excellent job as Miami's starting quarterback. 61% completion. Nine touchdowns, five interceptions, and he has also rushed for three touchdowns. Second and a dozen for Miami at their own 15. Collins shoots it out, complete to James Stewart, and he will lose two yards back to the 13-yard line and a penalty marker down. Nice stop made by the strong safety Mark Washington. Scarlet Knights doing a good job of playing defense and uh, coming up a bit very aggressive and uh, getting after the Hurricanes starting this ball game. Larry Jones, Donnell Bennett, Chris T. Jones, the leading receiver. Dietrich Clausel, the tight end, in place of an injured Sae Tucker. Perry and Lemelski, the tackles. Tyrell Green playing despite a sore shoulder that sidelined him most of the week in practice. And Casey Jones has had a banner year at center for Miami. But net two plays, very positive for the Rutgers defense. 
The defense is doing a good job. They've been able to stop the run, and then they're sitting back in their zone defense and reacting up on the shot pass, which they did on the last play, and that's the type of defense they must play today if they're going to be competitive. From the 14-yard line, third and 13 for Ryan Collins. Collins, under pressure, threw it as he was decked. So the Rutgers defense forcing Miami into a three downs and out. Yeah, you can see the Scarlet Knights are fired up, as are their fans who made the trip from New Brunswick, New Jersey. Well, Mike Chrissy will drop back in a punt formation, and he'll hit this one from his own two-yard line. Chris Brantley looking to run under it. He backpedals and takes it at the 38. Brantley gets outside. And penalty markers fly. Brantley stepped out of bounds. After crossing midfield to the Miami 47-yard line, Chris Brantley, leading wide receiver for this Rutgers team, pretty good punt returner as well. It's a 48-yard boot and a 12-yard return. Illegal block above the waist. An illegal block the against return. the Scarlet Knights, but Nat, we've seen in the first four minutes of this game that Rutgers emotionally has come ready to play. Rutgers come in here emotionally high. Miami seemed to be a little flat starting the ball game, but you know, knowing Coach Erickson, he'll find a way to get his team motivated and uh, up the play to finish this ball game and do the things they're supposed to do. You know, for a team coming in, a 34-point favorite, you know, they're not playing like that. First well, the Scarlet Knights at the 33. Here's a first down and 10 for Rutgers, and the give is to Bruce Presley, and he gets to the 34 yard line just a pickup of one. Tackled by Pass. Game for Bruce Presley on first down. Second down at eight, the 35. Well, where they spot it, Presley picks up about two, so it'll be second down and eight yards to go. Brantley wide to the left, Bailey in the slot, and the deep back is Presley. This is Presley. He goes straight ahead to the 38-yard line. Pickup of three. Eric Rutgers is just doing is just doing a good job of coming off the ball, trying to push that Miami defensive line back to stay in good pass run situations. They come up with third and five. So the Scarlet Knights face with a third down and five yards to go. Ray Lucas last week against West Virginia, season high 17 completions for a season best 169 yards. Had to leave in the third quarter with a concussion and a pinched nerve in his neck. Let's see what Lucas has in store on third down and five. This is Presley again. And he has the first down. Up down by Rohan Martin on the 46-yard line. That's a pickup of nearly eight yards. So Rutgers moving the chains here in the first quarter. And they're doing it on the ground, which is the key to this football game, is to control the clock, keep that Miami offense on the sideline, and run the football. Bruce Presley, as coach Doug Graber says, he is a more complete player than Terrell Willis. Although you see the numbers for the redshirt freshman Willis have been very, very impressive. And we'll see much of Terrell Willis this afternoon. Matter of fact, he's the lone setback on first and 10 for the Rutgers 45. And Willis met behind the line of scrimmage on the big pair. Warren Sapp, number 76. A 290-pound sophomore out of Plymouth, Florida, who's feeling healthy and playing very well. Yeah, he was injured last week versus Pitt, but he come back this week, and he just did a good job of hopping around the center and coming up, making the, set, making the tackle before Willis can get started upfield. So it'll be second down and 10 for Rutgers. 8.35, clock moving here in the first quarter. Second possession for Rutgers. We see the quarterback, Ray Lucas, out of the shotgun. And Willis bobbed down and stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Warren Sapp and Kevin Patrick combining for the stop. I'm a freshman, Terrell Willis. Kevin Patrick having an excellent year, but asked during the week, was he satisfied? He said, no way. I could have done a whole lot more, and he'll be shooting for that 
this week and the final two weeks for Miami. Well, Kevin Patrick is the is the young man that said that they are expected or they feel that they can come up with 55 sacks this year, and you know they're on pace to tie the record and possibly break it. Third down and ten. Lucas on the roll, being pursued by Patrick, flips it complete to the Miami 45-yard line. Mario Henry making the lunging catch. That will be close to a first down pickup. So Ray Lucas going impromptu with the flip ahead. That is an unbelievable pass. As we look at the replay, we see Lucas coming out to his left, and he doesn't have anybody open, and then he just sort of pitches it out, backhanded, to um, Mario Henry, who <laughs> makes the diving catch close to the first down. I mean, that was, uh, you talking about an impromptu play. you got to give uh, Lucas a lot of credit for thinking to do that. And it is a first down pickup. Ray Lucas. picked Rutgers over the, the other team that recruited him most heavily, Syracuse. Mario Henry, who made that catch, his 17th reception of the year. Henry, a transfer out of South Carolina. Those well, Scarlet Knights with a couple of first downs picked up. 7.20 left in a scoreless first quarter. This is Terrell Willis swinging it left and getting bumped out of bounds after a three-yard pickup. Harris Harris, the free safety, ranging over to the sideline to bump Willis out of bounds. Well, Willis is a guy with 4-3 speed that they don't want to turn the corner, and Miami's doing a good job every time he's got his hands on the football and coming up, putting a hat on it before he gets started. Harris Harris making his 19th start for the Hurricanes, fifth this year with 52 tackles. Ray Lucas and the Rutgers offense with a second down and eight. In Miami territory at the 43-yard line. Lucas with some time and incomplete. Intended for the tight end. Marco Pataglia, 240-pounder out of Queens, New York, who Coach Doug Graber says has all the tools to be a very good football player. But Lucas, a little wide. Pataglia was open, but uh, Kevin Patrick came in and put some pressure on him, not giving him a chance to step up and throw the football to force that errant pass. So it'll be third down and eight for Rutgers. This will be the ninth play of this Scarlet Knights drive. That's what Nat Moore said Rutgers wanted to do, control the football on the ground. But third and eight, Lucas to throw. Lucas away from Sapp, could not get away from Rohan Marley. Marley, the sophomore out of Miami's Palmetto High School, up strong and certain to make the tackle and force a Rutgers punt. That was just a good job of Rohan Marley staying back in the in the secondary until he crossed the line of scrimmage, then coming up, holding him short for the, of the first down. And on comes Nick Sheremetta. He'll punt it for the second time today to Jamie German, who has really become an added weapon for Miami on these return teams and also as a wide receiver. Low snap. Sheremetta gets it away. German on the run at the nine, and he is smothered. Penalty marker down. German initially appeared to give the fair catch sign. A 34-yard punt for Sheremetta. Our officiating crew today, a Big East crew, the referee with a white hat is Buddy Ward. So we will find out what the penalty is about. We've got two flags down, Eric. So one back at the line of scrimmage and one at the uh, point of the, of the catch. And like you say, he raised his hand and, and signaling a fair catch and uh, started to run. So I don't know which way they're going to rule this thing. On the receiving team. Both right. penalties appear, appear to be against the Miami Hurricanes. The penalties against Miami for offsides and delay of game. Well, you heard the two calls, offsides against Miami and delay of game against Miami. That's a strange call, uh, unless they're saying that when he started to run, even though he had signaled the fair catch, that that was a delay of starting uh, the next play. Uh, first time I ever heard that call. 
A weird start to this game. Slow starting, of course, for Miami. This will be their second offensive possession. Scoreless to this point with 6.20 to play in the first quarter. That where you were in Pittsburgh last weekend when Ryan Collins got the offense going well against the Panthers. Four first-half touchdown throws to four different Miami receivers. Well, Ryan Collins has done a good job of just moving the ball around, finding the open guy, not looking for a favorite receiver, relying on one guy. And last week was a great indication of that. But even more so, Ryan Collins has put the big play back in the offense. Something that was missing early on for Miami, but the Hurricanes have won three in a row. 49-0 against Syracuse. 42 to 7 against Temple and last week's 35 7 win at Pittsburgh so in the last three weeks the Hurricanes have outscored the opposition 126 to 14 and now we will not see the Miami offense because with those two penalties Rutgers picks up a first down other hurricane defense put their hats back on and clock in again Dennis Erickson not pleased with the start here in the first quarter for his Hurricanes. First and down for Rutgers at the Miami 31 yard line. Right over the bottom of your picture is Ray Lucas. All signals for Rutgers. Presley straight ahead. Brought down by Kenny Holmes. Presley. Kevin Patrick with an assist, but Presley to the 26 yard line in Miami territory. That's a five yard gain for Bruce Presley. Good, tough running by Bruce Presley. Just kept his legs moving and driving and going right through. As we look at ISO going right up the mill, there's not that good a blocking, but as you can see, once he makes contact, he just Game keeps his legs five. driving and picks Second up two or three five. extra yards. Good run by Bruce Presley. Kenny Holmes, the redshirt freshman, in there now. Second down and five now for Rutgers. Again, Presley's number gets called. He slashes his way to the Miami 22-yard line. Terrace Harris wrapping him up there. Another four-yard pickup for a slashing-type runner, Bruce Presley, who gained 100 yards last weekend, 20 carries at West Virginia. Well, this this West, this uh, Rutgers football team has been scoring 35 points a ball game, and you can see why as that offensive line is taking charge. They're moving that defensive line back and giving those great backs place a place to run. Well, Rutgers opened up with a pair of wins, 68-6 over Colgate, 39-38 over Duke, a ball game that Brian Forte came off the bench to spark Rutgers, bringing the chains out to measure for Rutgers' first down. And the Scarlet Knights fell at Penn State 30 one to seven bounce back with a 62 to nothing shellacking of Temple lost to Boston College by 10 beat Army 45 to 38 and the three consecutive losses 49 42 at Virginia Tech 21 to 10 against Pittsburgh at the Meadowlands and last week's route by West Virginia in Morgantown just shy of a first down for Rutgers They'll have it third, less than a yard, with five and a half minutes left in this scoreless first quarter. All year, the uh, Rutgers football team has been able to move the ball offensively. Defensively, they just have given up so many points that uh, it's kept them from being uh, a better football team. And as you can see here, they're moving the football. They're keeping that Miami defense on the field. And I wouldn't be surprised to see them go for a big play here and come back and go for it on fourth down there. Nothing to lose for Rutgers. Everything the game this afternoon. Third less than a yard as Ray Lucas ducks in. And he calls his own number and moves straight forward and should at the distance for another Rutgers first down. Scarlet Knights have converted four of their five third downs in the first down. Well, yeah, they're going along this year on third down uh, efficiency conversion they're going at about 46 percent which is fantastic uh, especially for a team that's uh, four and five Doug Graber in his fourth season as their head coach a one loss record of 20 and 22 at Rutgers well, officials time out an injured Rutgers player and it is their big offensive right tackle Scott Vaughn the transfer from Clemson 5-10 to play, first quarter. Miami and Rutgers scoreless here at the Orange Bowl. Alan Papiak, Honda South Motors, Inter-American. Create a super conference, pay the players, make them semi-professional. You can never have legitimate prize fights as long as 90% of the fighters work for the same guy. Oh, whoa, 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 it's a family show. Monday on Sunshine Network. 
At every football game, there are fans that stand out above the crowd. At the Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl, you'll find plenty of... Yes, the Zonies are back for the 15th time enjoying Friday night frenzies at the Cheyenne Saloon. They wear gaudy colored caps, drink from special cups, and sit in the worst seats in the stadium on New Year's Day. If that's not enough, they get free admission to the post-game Bula Bowl party. All for one great price. Tickets are on sale now, so get zany before they're all gone. You gotta want to be a Zony. Youth, high school, and junior college baseball and softball coaches. Be a part of the Simply the Best Coaches Clinic November 19th and 20th at Florida's beautiful Greenleaf Resort. Learn from a national speaking lineup featuring Texas Rangers pitching coach Tom House, Texas A&M coach Mark Johnson, Arizona softball coach Mike Candrea, and many more dynamic speakers for only $40. Join the excitement, education, and fun. Call Doyle Baseball at 1-800-443-5536 today. Story starts here. From the greats of the game to current controversies, nobody covers the big stories in the big leagues like Ed Randall's Talking Baseball. Get the inside story on Sunshine. It's like nothing you've ever seen before. It's the 94 Jeep and Eagle lineup. Drive into the future with special savings on Eagle Vision TSI. Or save up to $17.50 on Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo V8. Get into the affordable Summit family for this. Forward thinkers get great deals on Eagle Talent. It's some of the most advanced thinking on the road. And it's at your Jeep and Eagle dealer today. See your Florida Jeep and Eagle. 10 left in the first quarter. Miami and Rutgers are scoreless. Let's go downstairs to Joe Rose. Thank you, Eric. I just wanted to say that Carlos Jones, number 12, cornerback for the Miami Hurricanes, looks like he'll be out for the rest of the season on special teams, trying to make a tackle. He hurt his left knee. Looks like there's some ligament damage. And also, while we're talking about the running game, Rutgers is going to run, run, run. That's all they're talking about on the sideline. Back up to you guys. First and ten, Terrell Willis ripping through the Miami defense. He gets to the seven-yard line. A 13-yard run for Terrell Willis. And the Rutgers front five really getting the job done. But wait a minute. A holding call on Rutgers erases a huge run by Terrell Willis. Well, if you look here at the uh, left-hand side of your screen, I think the call is on uh, big number 79, Ken Devon, as he holds Kevin Patrick to keep him from coming down with the tackle. Dexter Siegler jumping on the back of Willis to bring him down, but Real Willis, a good-looking running back. They call him the home run hitter because he can go all the way. He has speed, but even more than that, he has quickness. Any back with good quickness will get through the hole in a hurry, and then he uses his speed to go the distance. And Rutgers doing it just as they would have drawn it up. They've kept the football all but a minute 23 in this first quarter. Miami had it three plays, and then were forced to punt. 17 for the Scarlet Knights. They give it to Willis again. Not much this time for Terrell Willis. And he fumbled the football. They pile up at the 32-yard line. Willis coughed it up. But the Scarlet Knights have covered it up. Robert Bass and Corwin Francis in on the stop. The Hurricanes have done some substituting. Patrick Riley in at a defensive tackle, along with Dwayne Johnson. Five yards. Second yard. Well, a loss of five on the play brings up a second and 22. Here we see another look as Presley tries to bounce it outside, and here comes that entire Miami defense to knock it loose. Well, Willis had a big pileup, and he doesn't get much. Perhaps back to the line of scrimmage. Robert Bass, the middle linebacker, closing strong. And again, Corwin Francis, the outside linebacker, number 58 from LaPorte, Texas, in on the stop. Robert Bass, an encouraging story. Hurt early in the year at Virginia Tech, lost his starting job to Ray Lewis, who became Miami's top tackler this year. But Bass, a senior, back in as the starter. Back in as the starter and doing what they expected from him all year. It's sad to see a guy get hurt, but Ray Lewis stepped in and did a fantastic job. But... Uh, Bass is back and doing the job. 15th play of his Rutgers drive, third and 22. Ray Lucas fires, has his man, but caught out of bounds by Mario Henry at the 21-yard line. Would have been 12 yards shy of the first down. So it'll be fourth down and 22 from the Miami 32. 
Here we take another look at the catch, and he does a good job of trying to get his feet down, but as you see, he didn't have possession of the football before he went out. Ray Lucas is a guy you have to be impressed with, the way he's moving around in that pocket, avoiding the sack, and still having the opportunity to throw the football downfield there. Well, John Benestad, that from Boca Raton, he's a senior, and he's really struggled this year. He's made just three of 10 on his field goal tries. A timeout first, 3.05 left, first quarter at the Orange Bowl. No score, we'll be right back. will be held January 23rd, it's like nothing you've ever seen before. It's the 94 Jeep and Eagle lineup. Drive into the future with special savings on Eagle Vision TSI. Or save up to $17.50 on Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo V8. Get into the affordable Summit family for this. Forward thinkers get great deals on Eagle talent. It's some of the most advanced thinking on the road. And it's at your Jeep and Eagle dealer today. See your Florida Jeep and Eagle dealer. At Olive Garden, it's really neat. They take care of us special. The moment you walk in the front door, there's somebody there to greet you, which is what I really like. I like their food. It's a really good value. The pasta is fresh, tender, yet firm. Yeah, I used to like chicken parmesan the best, and right now I'm in a domenicotti. It's like an Italian street festival in a lovely garden setting. The Olive Garden. Come visit us again soon. The Miami Hurricanes. Nobody plays better than they do. And nobody but nobody covers the Canes better than Canesport. 21 times a year, Canesport takes you inside the locker room and inside the coaches' minds for the most comprehensive coverage anywhere. Each issue brings you complete game analysis, exciting action photos, and more. To order Canesport, call 1-800-635-CANE. Or by mail, send 3195 to Canesport, Miami, Florida. Canesport. Don't miss an issue. Order now. the Orange Bowl, 20 plays for Rutgers, just three for Miami in this scoreless and somewhat bizarre first quarter. Don't miss this week's edition of Miami Dolphins Monday Night Magazine with your host Paul Kennedy. Call in toll free and talk with Dolphins offensive tackle Ron Heller and defensive back Jarvis Williams. They'll take your phone calls and comments this Monday night live at 7 only on Sunshine. Well, Doug Graber thought better of going for the long-distance field goal. Instead, he comes back with his punter, Nick Sharametta, his third boot here in the first quarter. On fourth down and 22. He'll aim it high. The wind gets a hold of it, and this will be an awful punt statistically as it bounces back to the 28-yard line. So statistically, that will go down as a four-yard punt, Matt Moore. Well, he tried to hang it up high and give his defenders a chance to get down under it, but uh, when he got it up in the wind, it started to come back at him. Well, officially a six-yard punt for Nick Sharonetto. With results like that, why not go for it on fourth down? Well, the Miami offense, three plays and a punt, and all that's left of the first quarter is two minutes and 55 seconds. Own setback is Donnell Bennett as the Canes start off at their own 26. This is Bennett, the junior from Fort Lauderdale, and he gets just a yard. And so far, Nat, the offensive front for Rutgers and their defensive front performing very well. So far, Rutgers is controlling the line of scrimmage where you play on your opponent's side of the line of scrimmage, and they're just doing a good job of handling that Miami front line. Andrew Beckett stand out at nose tackle. Linebackers, an inexperienced group, except for Jameel Jackson and Bob Sneathan on the right side. And the secondary has been decimated by injuries. Earl Simmons was a wide receiver until a week ago. Second down and nine. Collins out of the shotgun. Quick flip has Jonathan Harris, but Harris does not hold on. Covered by Brian Sheridan out at the 30-yard line. And that'll make it third down and nine for Miami. Brian Collins read the blitz there. They, they brought the guy over, Jonathan Harris. He tried to get the ball to him quick. It was just a little errant throw. Got to be able to complete that pass. That's what Collins did in a little more than half a game last week at Pitt Stadium. Again, Collins out of the shotgun. Four receivers available to him. And he finds Donnell Bennett. Penalty marker down, and Bennett kept away from the first down chain. Up at the 35-yard line, a pickup of 
Nine yards. It'll come up a yard shy of the first down as Mark Washington made the stop, but there is a penalty marker in the Hurricane backfield, formation. and it's a legal procedure against Miami. Well, Donnell Bennett made two mistakes that time. One, he didn't look the ball in and catch it, catch it on the uh, first first bounce, and then he was trying to dance instead of getting up field and getting the first down. Coming up a yard, two yards short of the first down. He should have been able to catch that and get the first down and force them to accept the penalty. Well, the Scarlet Knights refuse the penalty, and that forces Miami into their second punt of the first quarter. The Hurricanes were favored by more than 30 points, but once again, against a team they should be able to handle easily. Slow start for third-ranked Miami. Very sluggish. Mike Chrissy on the punt, a transfer from Ohio State, hails originally from Fort Lauderdale, averaging 40 yards a punt and has boomed eight inside the opponent's 20-yard line this season. So Chrissy will punt it to Chris Brantley. Under two minutes left in what has been a slow first quarter for the home club. Nice punt. Brantley from his 19-yard line. It's one block, has some room. And Brantley finally roped down at the 36-yard line by Twan Russell and a penalty marker thrown right at this point of contact. 47-yard punt by Chrissy, but a 17-yard return for Chris Brantley, who has looked good returning a couple of punts. That was a great punt. He just uh, outkicked the coverage, and uh, Miami didn't do a good job of getting down and, and coming down with the uh, tackle. And then to make things worse, you get a late hit by C.J. Richardson after the, after the play is dead. Here you see Chrissy gets off a great punt, good hang time. But he just outkicks the coverage, and Miami does not do a good job of getting down, coming under control, and containing Brantley before he gets started upfield. Here you see some great blocks by the Rutgers team as he turns upfield. And here we hope that you'll see the shot by C.J. Richardson, the late hit that led to the penalty. Doug Graber's Rutgers team, if you can believe this, have dominated the first quarter, even though we are scoreless. There is an injured Rutgers player down, and at this point, we haven't gotten a clean shot to see who he is. Well, it really should be a surprise to see this Rutgers football team move the ball, because they've done that all year. They just haven't been able to stop anybody, Eric. Well, Aaron Crowder is up and okay, thank goodness, for Rutgers. Crowder, a redshirt freshman defensive back who hails from Newark, New Jersey. Minute 41 left in the first quarter. Rutgers has it first and 10, and they start off, Nat, at the Miami 49-yard line. But Taglia in the tight slot, and this is Bruce Presley cutting it back and coming straight in the James Burgess. Pickup of about three yards. Patrick Riley, Darren Cryan, the first two to get to the hard-charging Bruce Presley. Well, Presley is just trying to cut back against that pursuit of the Miami football team and run through some arm tackles, but the defense did a good job of staying at home and taking care of their responsibility. We told you that Rutgers has dominated the first quarter. Here's a set of numbers to prove it. Five first downs for the Scarlet Knights, none for the third-ranked Hurricanes. Second down and eight. Eddie Walker in motion. Again, Presley up the middle. Big hole. Good run to the 40-yard line. That's a six-yard pickup for Bruce Presley. C.J. Richardson. Richardson. The hard-hitting strong safety out of Dallas, Texas, up to nail Presley, but not before a six-yard gain, and that'll make it third down and a yard to go. The middle of that Rutgers offensive line is just doing a great job of pushing the defense back, getting a tie, letting the back pick their hole as you see them keeping their feet moving, driving for extra yardage. Bruce Presley in his career, six 100-yard games rushing, and he's off to a good start today. Third down, a long one. Lucas looking to throw, has his man, and he has a first down. Bill Bailey catching it out of the backfield and picking up five yards. So six first downs for Rutgers and none for Miami. Just 18 seconds left in the first quarter. Good play selection. Little play action running Bailey out of the backfield. He looked like he was going to block and popped open three. And Lucas did a good job of getting him the football as you see him. 
Here he does a good job of stepping to his re to his receiver and getting it out there with a lot of zip, avoiding the the, the defense of uh, Burgess. We had a chance to knock it down from the Miami 35 on first down. Terrell Willis cuts it back up the middle, gains three yards to the 32-yard line. Darren Cryan, the defensive end out of Aurora, Colorado, in on the stop. But Rutgers moving the football as they wanted to do via the rush. And that is the end of the first quarter. Doug Graber is the coach that's pleased through one. Even though we are scoreless, is Rutgers Scarlet Knights a controlled play. You know, it used to be that only doctors had a pager. Then, engineers and construction contractors saw how important it was to use a paging service. And of course, every executive needed one. But in today's world, we all need a pager. And with AnswerWrite, everyone can afford a pager. Many beepers look the same, but make no mistake, there is a difference. Only AnswerWrite has a super beeper. For the best in paging, call AnswerWrite. Looking for some real flag football action? Play action! Dig! Dig! <laughs> Competition only the NFL can provide. Let's go with the ball, baby! Draft your team and air it out. For more information, call the Air It Out hotline at 305-663-2PLAY. Showtime, hey, baby. baby. Follow your thing trends. Air cushioned heels, deep grooves. All designed to enhance performance, making these soles tough shoes to fill. The mailman stuffs a special delivery as the Jazz bring it to Miami. But the Heat are looking to step it. Return to sender. At Sunshine Network, we're not just showing off our shoes. We're showing that the Miami Heat have some tough soles. The Jazz take on the Heat live Wednesday night at 7.30 on Sunshine. The Miami Hurricanes. Nobody plays better than they do. And nobody but nobody covers the Canes better than Canesport. 21 times a year, Canesport takes you inside the locker room and inside the coaches' minds for the most comprehensive coverage anywhere. Each issue brings you complete game analysis, exciting action photos, and more. To order Canesport, call 1-800-635-CANE. Or by mail, send 3195 to Canesport, Miami, Florida. Canesport. Don't miss an issue. Order now. at the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. Eric Reed with Nat Moore and Joe Rose through one quarter. Miami and Rutgers scoreless here on a homecoming weekend at the University of Miami. And a slanted first quarter for Rutgers. Six first downs for the Knights, none for Miami. The Canes picking up just five yards of offense in the first quarter. Let's go downstairs. Does it look any better there, Joe Rose? Uh, I think it's ugly everywhere right now. Another flat first quarter for a team that the University of Miami was supposed to blow out. They haven't been able to do it. The offensive line, once again, we see it every week. The offensive coach is going nuts on the play of the offensive line. Not happy with the way they're coming off the ball and the way they're getting stuffed. They need to get something going. They want to keep the game plan simple. They haven't been able to do it to this point. Thanks, Joe. 59 yards of total offense for Ray Lucas and Rutgers and just five yards of offense for Miami. Scarlet Knights ran 25 plays in the first quarter. Miami just six. On second and seven, penalty marker down, and they will blow this play dead. Well, Nat Moore, does the first quarter serve as a wake-up call to Miami? I would like to think so or hope so because, you know, it's homecoming. You're, you're looking at uh, playing a team you should blow out. You should have a big party tonight. you got a concert later. And uh, I'm beginning to think that they're thinking about the concert and the party without uh, taking care of business first. Well, John Sakata, a graduate of the University of Miami and a Grammy Award winner, will present a concert after the game. But I think the 40 to 50,000 that have come to the Orange Bowl came here to see a football game. First. Yes. Dennis Erickson, of course, said not only do we have to win this weekend, we have to win convincingly because the polls judge you by the week. It was illegal procedure against Rutgers, so they'll have it second down and 12. Now they have to reset the clock. You see the time of possession, as are all the other statistics slanted in favor of Rutgers. Well, that's what Rutgers wanted to come in here, come in here and do is control the clock, keep that offense off the football field. And uh, Miami 
defensively are going to have to get people in the gaps to start getting some penetration and, and force Rutgers to throw the football. Eddie Walker to the left. Mario Henry to the right. You see Willis in motion on second and a dozen. Bill Bailey gets the give. Corwin Francis, 58. Number 49, Robert Pass stopping Eddie Walker. Excuse me, the, the running back, Bill Bailey, a short pickup. And that'll bring up a third down and nine. So a gain of just three for Bill Bailey. Bailey goes just five feet, seven, 190 pounds. He's out of West Milford, New Jersey. And he and Mario Henry leaves the game on third and nine. Eddie Walker to the top. Lance Avina and Brantley to the left as the sophomore Ray Lucas takes a look out of the shotgun. Penalty marker down. And Brantley on the one hop. That's incomplete. And let's find out what the flags are for. Marley is a defender. Penalty flags are down. Illegal procedure against Rutgers. We're less than a minute into the second quarter and still looking for a score here between Rutgers and Miami. Let's take another look here on the end zone shot and see if we see the legal procedure. The left tackle came up a little soon there. You can see if his hand comes up before the ball is snapped. Fourth down at nine. Well, Miami declined the penalty. Fourth down and nine for Rutgers. And now we will see the native of Boca Raton, Florida, John Benestad. He is the senior place kicker for Rutgers. 10 of 14 on his field goals last year. Just three of 10 this year. Out of the hold of Brian Forte. This will be a 52-yard kick with a wind at his back. And he gets it. John Benestad nailing a 52-yard field goal. And Rutgers on the scoreboard first. Well, if nothing else, this here should wake up that University of Miami football team offensively. They've got to come back and take charge and get the lead. And uh, just a great kick. Let's take another look at this kick. And watch his reaction as he watches it, watches it. And you could tell by his reaction that it went through. As we said, been a rough season for John Benestad, who set single season records a year ago as Rutgers place kicker, but has struggled with the kicking game this year. 14 minutes, eight seconds left in the first quarter. And the folks that came down from New Brunswick, New Jersey, with something to cheer about that's tangible. They've dominated the game to this point. Now they finally have points on the scoreboard. Dennis Erickson's Hurricanes trailing three to nothing. So a 52-yard field goal capping a seven-play drive. So Rutgers gets points before Miami gets a first down, and we are into the second quarter. So you see what an unusual afternoon of football we've had so far. Extra Siegler, Jonathan Harris in twin safety formation as John Benestad will boot it to him. This will be Siegler from the eight. And Siegler brought down at the 27-yard line. Good hit on the special teams by Julius Blackwell. And that field goal a moment ago by John Benestad as we look at the numbers, seven plays, 14 yards. Benestad's 52-yarder, the second longest in the history of Rutgers football. Well, hats off to the Boca Raton native. Got to feel good coming back home to South Florida and nailing one from 52 yards away. Right, and also, Rutgers is the only team other than Florida State to score on Miami first this year, and so you have to take your hats off to the Ruck to Rutgers. Ryan Collins on first down. Shoots it complete to Donnell Bennett, who stumbles forward to the 37-yard line. 
Bennett. Nearly a 10-yard pickup. We'll call it nine. Donnell Bennett catching the bullet from Ryan Collins. And it's time for Miami to start moving the sticks a bit. It's time for Miami to, to put forth the effort and, and show why they're one of the great offenses in college football. There you saw Donnell Bennett do a good job of making sure the catch first, not trying to run with the football without catching it. From left to right, top of your screen, Chris T. Jones, A.C. Tellison, and Marcus Wimberlin. But going nowhere goes the running back for Miami. Big stop up front by Anthony Cawthon, the defensive end. Now, the Hurricanes haven't done much, but, Nat, what were your keys for Miami to get it done today? Well, Miami had to, first of all, avoid overconfidence, which so far look, doesn't look like they've done that. They've got to limit their turnovers. They have not turned the ball over, but they haven't had the football, and they have not been able to run with the football because Rutgers are, are blitzing those linebackers, getting people in the hole. Third down and two, pass broken up, intended for Donnell Bennett. Sean Smith, number four, and the linebacker, number 89, Bob Sneathan, all over Donnell Bennett. So, three opportunities for Miami, and three times offensively, it's been three downs and out. Well, here we see Donnell Bennett running a little turn in, a little hitch, and you see Sneathan doing a good job of getting in his vision and not allowing him to catch the ball clean. Against the wind, Chrissy will hit it from his 25. Brantley watches it bounce. And Marcus Carey will touch it down at the Rutgers 22. 12 minutes and 39 seconds left in the second quarter. And Dennis Erickson's Hurricanes have done nothing. Three to nothing, Rutgers. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Paul Kennedy. Here's your chance to bring your home team to meet our home team at Disney's Magic Kingdom for Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. We'll select the winner the first week of December at halftime of a Magic game. Join us, won't you, for Mickey's Very Merry Christmas. Now's your chance to get a great deal on a two-wheel drive 94 Jeep Cherokee with air at no extra charge, a four-liter six-cylinder engine, automatic transmission, power steering, power brakes, an AM-FM stereo, and air conditioning at no extra charge. Not for $24,000, not even $19,000, but for this week's incredibly low price. But it's a limited time offer, so hurry, you might not get a second chance. Miami Hurricane football. Live the tradition at Trading Card Day as the Hurricanes take on the Memphis State Tigers. For tickets, call 1-800-GO-CANE. Create a super conference, pay the players, make them semi-professional. You can never have legitimate prize fights as long as 90% of the fighters work for the same guy. Oh, 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 it's a family show. Monday on Sunshine Network. At Norwegian Cruise Line. The University of Miami at the Orange Bowl. They've won 55 games in a row, but trailing Rutgers thanks to John Benestad's 52-yard field goal. 12.39 left here in the second period. Eric Reed with Nat Moore and Joe Rose. I remind you, hard-hitting hockey action continues on Sunshine Network as the New York Rangers face off against the Florida Panthers at Miami Arena Tuesday night, live at 7 o'clock. Check your local listings for availability in your area. Ray Lucas and Rutgers with the ball and a three to nothing lead. And look at those numbers. My goodness. Bruce Presley, who's done most of the rushing work for Rutgers here in the first half, gains two off right tackle. Aaron Pryde and Patrick Riley in on the stop. So far today, Bruce Presley, 10 carries, 42 yards. Presley with a season-high 149 yards rushing earlier this season against Duke. Second down and eight. 
Again, Presley up the middle, Ray Lewis and Warren Sapp in on the stop. So Lewis, the true freshman linebacker, number 52 out of Lakeland, Florida, into the game. The Hurricanes have done some substituting, and Lewis, one of the most pleasant surprises this year in college football, barely recruited, and he became a star for Miami's defense early on this year. A young guy with a lot of ability as far as speed and quickness, runs to the ball well, and a big hitter, and he's now in there and anchoring that defense for the Hurricanes. Third and seven, the Hurricanes looking for a big play. Marley with a near sack. And Lewis with tight coverage on Bruce Presley out of the backfield. Well, Rohan Marley, the blitzing outside linebacker, decking Lucas as he threw the football. And perhaps the Miami offense can garner some momentum from the defense that's just forced Rutgers three downs and punt. Well, Miami's defensive coordinator, Tommy Tuberville, came with a blitz there, changed up on him a little bit, and caught him by surprise. And Lucas didn't have time to step up and throw the football to his, his receiver. We are getting to know these punters very well in the first half. Sheremetta will hit it from his 16. Nice boot. German. And a sprint back to the 20 to get it. Now he's got some room. Andy German looking to break it back. Cannot get away. Excellent stop. On the play for Rutgers by Reggie Funderburk. He stopped Jamie German from a potential big play cutback. Well, you'd like to see Jamie German just keep going forward once he does that, but uh, he has a tendency to cut back a little too often. Back to the Orange Bowl with Rutgers on top right after this. For the latest highlights and insights of the Tampa Bay Lightning and around the NHL, join Terry Chris as Lightning Strikes every Monday night at 6.30 on Sunshine Network. Now, youth, high school, and junior college baseball and softball coaches. Be a part of the Simply the Best Coaches Clinic November 19th and 20th at Florida's beautiful Greenleaf Resort. Learn from a national speaking lineup featuring Texas Rangers pitching coach Tom House, Texas A&M coach Mark Johnson, Arizona softball coach Mike Candrea, and many more dynamic speakers for only $40. Join the excitement, education, and fun. Call Doyle Baseball at 1-800-443-5536 today. See it on TV. Saturday, reporter Gail Gailey couldn't have asked for a better story. Rescued from a burning plane by a picture-perfect hero, there's just one small problem. The real savior is someone else, and he's having a hard time getting people to believe him. You wouldn't do it. I mean, it's a character thing, Bernie. Hero on HBO. The lifeblood of sports in the Southeast. Every week, preview the top conferences, the big names, and the key matchups on Southern Football Saturday. Saturdays at 11 on Sunshine Network. Back at the Orange Bowl, John Benestad's 52-yard field goal for Rutgers. Your only points so far. And that more just a moment ago. Jamie German, he shows you ability to make a big play, but you feel perhaps trying a little too hard. Right. Here you see him do a good job. He beats the first guy to one-on-one, -on -one, and now he's trying to reverse his field and go all the way back against the grain. That's where he has to just go north and south. You know, in high school, you can get away with that. That's just a freshman mistake, and he'll learn from it. Beautiful afternoon here at the Orange Bowl in Miami. What a less than artistically pleasing first half for the Hurricanes. Ryan Collins, three of five for 15 yards. This is Donnell Bennett and gingerly coming to the line of scrimmage. Just a half a yard for Donnell Bennett. Andrew Gable, number 71, in on the stop. Along with Jameel Jackson, the linebacker, and number 54, Brian Sheridan. Look like having three players suspended has really fired up this Rutgers defense because they're playing good, solid defense. They don't look like a team giving up 31 points a ball game. And in the last three weeks, Rutgers has surrendered nearly 43 points again. Second down and nine. Collins overthrows Jamie German too high. And nobody looking very sharp for Miami so far. Nobody looking sharp. That Third down. Seems like Ryan Collins is, is off target today. He's either a little high or a little low, and you know he had Jamie German wide open, just overshot his mark. Ryan Collins, the sophomore quarterback, making just his fourth start 
you see his numbers. Dennis Erickson said this week he's made some mental mistakes that come from inexperience, but he's also made some very big plays, and most of them under adverse conditions. So Collins can make it happen, and the Hurricanes hope he does on third and nine. Collins has time. Now forced out of the pocket. He'll try and run for the first down. And he gets it. Collins across midfield for the first time today. Miami in Rutgers territory. And with 10-17 left in the second quarter, that's the initial first down for Miami. The initial first down, but the excitement, the big play that this Miami offense needs, and that's why Ryan Collins is your starter because of his ability not only to throw the football, but when he's having a bad day, he can beat you with his legs as, you, as he comes out of the pocket on the last play. So Ryan Collins advancing it for Miami's first first down today. Picked up nearly 20 yards. James Stewart breaks a tackle. Look at him go. Down the sideline. 49-yard touchdown for James Stewart and Miami. That's the big play that the Hurricanes have been waiting for. James Stewart showed you his ability and his speed as he jumped over the pile and then turned on the afterburners. Big run by James Stewart. Number 28 for the Hurricanes. The fourth rushing touchdown this year for James Stewart, the 235-pound sophomore wrecking ball with the speed of a sprinter. He's had a Vero Beach, and no question, turned the quarter. It was a 49-yard one-man track meet. For a big man, this guy has blazing speed, and he showed it there as he went the distance for the six. And Dan Pruitt pops in the extra point. He's made 71 of 72 point afters in his Miami career. Big rumble for James Stewart. Miami in front for the first time. We'll be right back. Here is your chance to bring your home team to Disney's Magic Kingdom for Mickey's very Merry Christmas party. Believe me, this is going to be one exciting evening with a winning lineup, fast breaks, explosive displays, photo finishes, free collectibles, and in-your-face action. To win, send me a postcard with your name, address, and phone number. The winning entry will also win a stay at a select Disney resort with meals and tickets. We'll draw the winner at halftime of a Magic game the first week of December. Miami Hurricane football. Live the tradition at Trading Card Day as the Hurricanes take on the Memphis State Tigers. For tickets, call 1-800-GO-CANE. Now for the first time this afternoon at the Orange Bowl, the homecoming weekend crowd with something to stand up and cheer about. 49 yards around right end and a touchdown for James Stewart. There you see good blocking, but a great effort by James Stewart stepping over everybody and then turning on the great speed. You know, that play was set up by Ryan Collins showing his ability with that 21-yard run to keep the drive alive and get the first first down as we take another look at James Stewart just showing him his speed. Big, strong man that runs over people but also has the speed of a young, small, quick back. Four plays, 71 yards, just a minute one of drive time for Miami. But the Hurricanes on that possession gain their first first down and their first points. 7 to play, second quarter. This is Terrell Willis, number 31, following Bill Bailey. Nice spinning run up to the 36-yard line. 20-yard kickoff return for Terrell Willis. 
Miami leading at 7-3. We've played five minutes of the second quarter, and you get the feeling the Hurricanes ready to explode. You get the feeling the Hurricanes are ready to play football, but I know Coach Dave Arnold can't be too happy with special teams the way they're playing here today. Willis came through there and almost had a chance to break it big. As you can see, you've got a big wall there, the wedge as we call it, and here he just makes a good move and loses his balance, but there was a big hole for him to run through. Rutgers starts from their own 36, and Willis gets just a couple. Maybe a yard to the 37-yard line for Terrell Willis. Ray Lewis, number 52, made the stop. The Hurricanes have changed their linebackers. Ray Lewis in the middle. James Burgess and Twan Russell on the outside. So all three are freshmen playing linebacker now for Miami. And that bodes well for the future of Tommy Tuberville's defense. That's that's one of the pleasures of being the coach of the University of Miami to have young guys you can put in when the veterans are not getting it done that's going to be excited and uh, come across the ball and make big plays for you. Number 38, second and eight. And Willis spinning with Twan Russell holding on to the 42-yard line. I so can four-yard gain, and that'll bring up a third down and four for Rutgers. Eric, we can see why Rutgers is so excited about this young uh, tailback, uh, Willis. He just got a lot of shake and bake and quickness, and every time he runs the football, he has the ability to go to distance. Terrell Willis has 4-3 speed in the 40, recruited heavily by UCLA, Iowa, and Syracuse but decided to stay home and go to Rutgers. He's from Orange, New Jersey. Third down, four. Lucas looking, has his man, and a first down. Mario Henry at the 49, brought down immediately by Dexter Siegler, but a seven-yard pickup. Rutgers moves the chains. They gain another first down. Well, Miami came with the blitz, and they didn't even get close to him. You know, this offensive line of Rutgers has only given up 13 sacks all year, and we're seeing why today, as they do a good job of protecting the quarterback against the blitz. Well, this is a four and five Rutgers team that has lost three straight and five out of seven. But they've played very sound football so far in the first half, which has 8.20 left in it. Terrell Willis, not much room, but he peeks into Miami Willis. territory for the 49-yard line. Ray Lewis angling over to help Kevin Patrick with the stop. They love Terrell Willis. Matter of fact, Nat, the first 1,000-yard rusher since Curtis Edwards picked up a grand for Rutgers back in 1975. What, what, what a pleasure it must be to be Coach Graber to have a, a freshman come in. You lose your guy, Presley. He's out injured. And you get a freshman that come in and rush for over 1,000 yards. First time it's been done in a while. Miami has contained Willis today, but he is still... I think a lock to be the Big East freshman of the year. Second down, long eight. The give to Willis, and he will lose a yard back to the Miami 49-yard line. And a gang of orange tacklers, Von Russell, James Burgess, and Darren Cryan. And there you see James Burgess, the true freshman out of Homestead, Florida. He's playing with a shoulder bruise, but this is a young man that's gotten better by the week. Well, here you see him try to run a, a draw from the shotgun, and Miami is not full, and you see the whole Miami defensive foot front seven in on the tackle. Third down and 10 for Rutgers. Back on their side of midfield with seven minutes left in the second quarter. Lucas looking deep for Henry, incomplete. Well covered, but Henry had a shot at it. There is a penalty marker back in the Rutgers backfield. Holden on the offense. Against Rutgers. Miami might well decline. That would bring up a fourth and ten. As we look back here, we see Ray Lucas going back. He has his receiver. He wants to go to all Holden. the way. Rutgers the runs a little trick play to try and pull Ziegler up and hit, hit the... Uh, Bow out behind him to Henry, but he does a good job of keeping vi vision and reacting to the football. Well, Siegler got into the passing lanes, probably blocking Henry's vision because he had his hands on it. It was a good throw. It should have been a, a reception, and uh, Henry needs to come down with that ball. Hurricanes do decline, so on fourth and ten, Nick Sheremetta will punt it to Jamie German, and with the wind at his back, Sheremetta should get all of it. it does bounce into the end zone. A 50-yard punt 
no return. First and 10 for Miami at their own 20. 6.44 left in the second quarter. The Hurricanes leading by the count of 7-3. to three. Miami scoring on James Stewart's 49-yard touchdown run. Last time they had the football. Be interesting to see how they respond on this possession. Well, you, you've got to be fired up. You, you've struggled so far the, the entire ball game. You get two big plays and you get seven points on the board. But those are just big plays. They've got to establish the run. They've got to take control of this football game and keep that Rutgers offense on the sideline. Join host Tony Segreto for the Dennis Erickson Show every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. all season long for all the latest scores and highlights of Miami Hurricane football. Be sure to tune in to the Dennis Erickson Show on Sunshine Network. Well, Dennis Erickson said this week, we have to win convincingly. We are in position to at least get a look at that national championship. Ryan Forte, the former Miami quarterback, he was the on and off starter last year when he threw 16 touchdowns and 16 interceptions, again sharing the job with Ray Lucas this year. And uh, disappointing for Forte, leaving Miami, going to Rutgers, and not winning the job outright. And I talked to Doug Graber this week, Nat. He said, I'm not nuts about playing both quarterbacks. Both Forte and Lucas have had their opportunities. Neither have been consistent enough to keep the job. Yeah, you've got two young men that both have talent, but you, you look for one of them to step forward and become the leader, and, and neither has done that. And it's got to be frustrating for Forte to come in here and not be able to play today or not be the start against the Hurricanes. C.J. Richardson trying to stay cool on the Hurricanes sideline. On first and ten, Collins with plenty of time to find somebody, and he does. This is Gerard Gaffness, the tight end, and he gets it to the 33-yard line. 13-yard pickup and a nice hookup. Ryan Collins to Mr. Gaffness, the redshirt freshman out of Norland High School in Miami. On that last play, the offensive line just did a good job. Ryan Collins had all day to stand back there and pick out his receiver, and he showed a lot of poise because he didn't come out of there running with it. He has the ability to do so, and he just waits, finds his open receiver, Daphnis, and Daphnis shows a little quickness there and speed as you see him catch it and go running upfield. Sean Smith bringing down Daphnis after the 14-yard game. That should be pass interference. You get the flags coming in late. Jonathan Harris tripped up at the 42-yard line. Ryan Collins put it right there. He put it there, and he had a lot of zip on that ball. He tried to fit it into a tight hole, and the only way they were able to stop that from being a completion was to come up with pass interference. On the defense. Well, the Hurricane offense looking a bit crisper. The last two times they have had the That's football. 6 13 the left defense. in the first half. Foul. 7 to 3. Foul. Miami in front of Rutgers. Well, early in the ball game on the pass, the majority of the passes went to Donnell Bennett. Now you're starting to see him move the ball around. It went to Daphnis to just try to go to Jonathan Harris. And I expect to see this Hurricane offense just open up and do the things that have made him successful all year now. Kings had just five yards of offense after one quarter. Amy German and Marcus Wimberly to the right. A.C. Tellison to the bottom of your picture. On first down, Donnell Bennett doesn't get a thing. Oh, now he does. Move forward to the 45-yard line. Good, hard-charging second effort for Bennett. Because he was closed off initially, but he dragged Sneathan and Sheridan four tough yards. Bennett just showed you why he's the starter with those great backs that they have at the Hurricanes. He's the number one guy. He's the guy they want in there under pressure in big situations, and he just showed you his abilities. He kept his feet driving and picked up uh, four or five extra yards. Donnell Bennett with over 1,000 career yards rushing. Was a five-yard gain, brings up a second and five. With five and a half minutes left in our first half. And Collins on the roll, going deep for Tellison. Makes the catch. Touchdown, Miami. Penalty flags down, but this one should stand up as a 55-yard touchdown connection. Ryan Collins to the junior A.C. Tellison. Well, A.C. Tellison showed great concentration as he was interfered with, but he had a small advantage, a small defensive back, and he was able to just go up and take the ball away and then waltz into the end zone. Good concentration.
hesitation by A.C. Tellison to come back and take the football away. And Tellison has made some big plays for Miami this year. That's his fourth touchdown catch. And you talk about big playmakers. Ryan Collins with his 10th touchdown pass. A.C. Tellison, 6'4". He's a junior from Bay City, Texas. You know, Matt, we've talked in weeks prior how easy Ryan Collins makes it look to throw the football accurately on the roll. And it's not easy. Dane Pruitt will attempt the point after out of Mike Chrissy's hole. And he misses. Wide to the right. So a timeout on the field with 5.21 left in the second quarter. 13 to 3. Miami in front. That's the first missed extra point in 32 attempts this year for Pruitt. And just his second missed point after in 73 career attempts. Here we see the play action as they bring Ryan Collins out on the boot. And he sets steps and throws the football. But watch A.C. Tellison at the top of your screen just goes up and takes the ball away from the Rucker defender. Excellent concentration by A.C. Tellison. There you get another look at it. He's, he's hit just as he delivers the football, but he knows it's true. And watch the reaction of a young man that's just completed a 55-yard TD pass. Great success story here in Miami. The local kid, Ryan Collins. And he has made very, very good here in his sophomore season. Now the Hurricane offense started slowly. Their first three possessions, three downs and out. Their last two possessions, touchdowns. A 49-yard run by James Stewart and a 55-yard hookup you just saw. Ryan Collins to A.C. Tellison. And the remarkable thing about Collins, Nat, for a young player, on the roll, able to square those shoulders up every time and deliver accurately. Well, he's, he's impressed us all year with his ability and his smartness as he gets it comes around he always squares up and he steps to where he's throwing the football so he can get some zip on it Scott Barnwell the kick it to Terrell Willis or Bill Bailey and this is Willis five yards deep in the end zone touchback so what was an awful first quarter for Miami turning as you would expect here in the second quarter on homecoming weekend at the University of Miami the Canes leading Ray Lucas and Rutgers 13 to 3. Well, Eric, I think the University of Miami in the second quarter got that wake up call and uh, have come out to play play some football now. Ray Lucas getting some last minute advice from his head coach Doug Graber. Graber took over the Rutgers program from Dick Anderson the longtime Penn State assistant who returned to Penn State as an assistant coach after leaving Rutgers. Doug Graber hopes that the new on-campus stadium being constructed on the campus of Rutgers will really help his program. They had to play all their home games this year at the Meadowlands, and that is hardly a home field advantage for them. They don't draw well. The Meadowlands 45 minutes from their campus. Now, excellent defensive surge for Miami, led by the linebacker Corwin Francis. Terrell Willis has found the running room tough to come by. Well, that, that Miami's uh, front four, defensive front four, is now coming off the football, playing on Rutgers' side of the line of scrimmage. Let's go downstairs to Joe Rose. Well, we haven't seen a lot of the big play from the University of Miami this year. Today, we've seen two of them. Surprisingly, that was the first catch by a wide receiver today. I think you now realize how important it is to get those wide receivers involved in this offense. Back up to you guys. On second and 10, Lucas out of the shotgun as a man at the 25-yard line. C.J. Richardson making the stop on Marco Battaglia, a six-foot, three-inch sophomore tight end. 25th catch of the year for Battaglia. That was a perfect throw by uh, Lucas to Pataglia. The only place it could be thrown, and uh, Richardson had no chance to come come away and knock it away. You see a little pressure, but he does a good job of stepping up, throwing the football before he takes his lick. Rutgers is 5 of 11 on third down. This is third and five with four minutes left in the first half. Ray Lucas being chased as another first down game. Lance Avina, a junior out of Berwick, Pennsylvania, 
Makes the catch up to the 34-yard line, maybe the 35. So a 10-yard gain and a first down pickup for Rutgers. Lucas shows you his quick feet as you see him sprint out of the pocket and has the presence to throw back against the grain to Lance Savina for the first down. Well, you've got to like Rutgers average picking up first downs on third down. They're hitting at 50% net, six out of 12. That's why they're a good offensive football team is that when, they, when the chips are down, they come through with the completion and keep the drive alive. From their own 36, first and 10 for Rutgers. Lucas on play action, smashed as he threw the football. Incomplete for Brantley at the 40-yard line. Warren Sapp knocked the wind out of Lucas at the minimum. Warren Sapp delivering a terrific blow to the midsection of Ray Lucas as he threw it. Yeah, Warren Sapp just did a good job of beating it beating the blocker, coming free, and when he had the wide open shot on Lucas, he puts a hit on him. Let's go back and take a good look as you see Lucas stepping up to throw the football, and wham! At 10. That has to hurt. Ray Lucas could be uh, looking for the flak jacket concession stand uh, at halftime. Second down and 10 for Rutgers. 3.26 left here in the second quarter. And uh, Warren Sapp again, quick to the ball carrier, Terrell, Terrell Willis. Just a yard gain. Well, Miami's doing a better job against the run now, but they're still not able to get there and put pressure and come up with a sack on the quarterback. But we've got third and long, and let's see if Miami can put some pressure on him and come down with a sack. Well, the Hurricanes were hoping to get to Ray Lucas enough, try to knock him out to force Doug Graber into playing Brian Forte. Of course, Forte leaving under some negative circumstances and then turning around and suing the University of Miami for some $10 million for breaking a promise that he'd be the starting quarterback. Give me a break. That's unheard of. Terrell Willis into the secondary. First down, plenty more, and look at Willis go. Great run for Terrell Willis. The redshirt freshman finally broke out of the barn doors. A big gain. They caught On third down. He picks up 55 yards. They caught Miami sleeping. They came with the draw, knowing that Miami was going to come with the blitz and a lot of pressure. And there was a big hole pop loose up the middle. As you can see, they ran this several times. Good blocking at the point of attack. A little hole there on Robert Bass. But here will it show you why they're so excited about his running ability as he weaves all over the field to come up with a 55-yard gain. And you see Dexter Siegler just do a good job closing from the other side, even though Good point and good pursuit on Terrell Willis. On first down, Presley up the middle to the five-yard line. Pickup of three on first down. So it'll be second and goal for Rutgers at the Miami five-yard line. Two minutes left here in the first half and coming up at halftime. We'll hear from John Sakata, the Grammy Award singer out of the University of Miami. Joe Rose will talk with Jillian Russell, one of the great track performers at the University of Miami. We'll also have stats and first half highlights. Second and goal for the Scarlet Knights at the Miami Five with a minute 38 left in the second quarter. Lucas looking for Bailey, makes the catch. Slipped away from Marley, but not away from Dexter Siegler. And Bailey to the two-yard line. It'll be third and goal from there. Good job by Dexter Siegler to come in to put the finishing touches on Bailey as he broke the tackle of uh, Rohan Marley to keep him from getting in the end zone. One would think that Rutgers is in four-down territory, trailing by 10, final minute of the first half. Down, goal to go from the two-yard line. Lucas on the keeper. Gets in, touchdown Rutgers. Ray Lucas with his fifth rushing touchdown. And he gets the Scarlet Knights into the end zone with 49 seconds left in the first half. Rutgers took advantage of Ray Lucas' speed as they brought him out on a run pass option, which looked to be a run option all the way as he did a good job of running it in, running tough to get into the end zone. John Penistad. John Penistad in the attempt, the point after. Ray Lucas 
Excellent athlete, a sophomore out of Harrison, New Jersey, and pretty good size. Six foot three, 200 pounds. He followed his blocks well as he rolled left on third and goal and snuck it in from two yards out. Now, Benestad can hit this point after. Miami will lead it by just three. Just three, and the missed extra point looms big because now a field goal will tie the ball game for Rutgers. John Benestad hit a 52-yarder in the first minute of the second quarter, and here's another look at the Lucas touchdown. Here you see it. It looks like it's a run all the way as you see him tuck the ball away, and then there he shows his toughness as he goes for the goal line. Robert Bass and Rohan Marley have the best shot of keeping him out, and they did not. Well, it just goes to show you this: when a guy has his mind made up that he's going to run tough, I tell you, he just did break the plane of the goal line to get in for the touch there, Eric. So happy times on the Rutgers side of the Orange Bowl. Miami's 55 game home winning streak on the line today and you can see Ray Lucas getting a little breather. He took some good shots on that drive and uh, he hung in there and uh, got the job done. Nine plays 80 yards on the drive for Rutgers. That's an excellent drive for the Scarlet Knights. The John Benestad to attempt the point after. He's 32 of 35 this year. Out of a hold of Brian Forte into the net, it's good. So in 49 seconds to go in the second quarter, Rutgers has narrowed the margin to three. Doug Graber's Scarlet Knights, he said during the week, we are a somber group. It's been a rough couple of weeks. We want to go to Miami and not embarrass ourselves. And they have done uh, everything a coach could have hoped for so far. Well, offensively, they've, they've done just about everything they've wanted to do. They've been able to run the football, control the football with the great backs. Offensive line have done a fantastic job of protecting the quarterback, giving him ample time to throw. And then defensively, they've been able to hold Miami's uh, offense down where Miami has not put up a lot of points, which is what we expected. We expect to see Miami put up 30, 40 points in the first half, and they have not done that. A nine-play, 80-yard drive, consuming just over four and a half minutes. Well, you talk about Big East Conference football. Oh, Rutgers oh, oh. program down this year. But in talking with Doug Graber, he says we've slowed down Penn State's recruiting in the state of New Jersey. That's a terrific state for high school football, and he hopes to keep his share of New Jersey kids home at Rutgers. Well, that's what the state school have to do. You, you've got to be able to get the best players in your state and then filter out and get some comparable players to go with them. But ironically, over the, over the past years, Penn State has come in and stolen most of those players, and now he's done a better job of keeping the kids at home as you see Terrell Willis Hurricanes football final home game of the season against Memphis State on Saturday afternoon November 27th tickets are available for that game at the Orange Bowl if you're interested call 1-800-GO-CANS starting time for that game to be determined ESPN thinking about picking up that game so it may be moved to nighttime check your local sports sections for information Danny German, German calling for the fair catch in the end zone so touchback first and 10 for Miami their own 20 yard line the Hurricanes in front 13 to 10 well that's the kind of play there Eric it's 49 seconds left in the half you'd like to see him come out and try and make something happen because of his broken field running ability so you know, he's going to learn as the, as the season progressed, and he's going to be a great one, but those are the kind of plays when you need a guy to step forward and make a big play for you. Let's see what Ryan Collins has in store on first and ten. At the shotgun, he has Tellison to the bottom of your screen, Jones and Jonathan Harris to the right. And this one incomplete. Caught up in the wind, intended for Tellison, and not even close. Well, you've got a real stiff wind here today, and you get that ball up in the wind, it's going to do funny things. You'll probably even see a knuckleball come out of there. Wind blowing in, as you can see it. Great shot from our Sunshine Network crew. John Liu, our director today. Jeff DeMoss producing our telecast. And you see the wind blowing in the open end of the Orange Bowl and right into the face mask of Ryan Collins in the Miami offense. Second and ten. Looking deep for Jamie German. The catch. Great catch. Great catch by Jamie German as he went up and took it away. 
just went over the defender to come down with the catch. The acrobatics of Jamie German. A 45-yard catch by Jamie German, who went up high to pull it down. He just went back over Michael Roberts and took it away, giving Miami a first down in good field position with a chance to go in for the score. Let's take another look at it. Here you see Ryan Collins just goes back and throws it as far as he can, giving his receiver a one-on-one -on -one jump ball. And here you see Jamie German wins the jump ball. German jumping right over the top of the redshirt freshman Michael Roberts. Here we get another look at Ryan Collins as he throws it as far as he can. And he says, well, I've got it out there. I've got it out there. And then he knows Jamie German has just made a great catch as you see him sprint down to get in position to run the next play. Just his fourth start, Ryan Collins extraordinarily cool under fire. Very cool and shows a lot of poise for a South Fork quarterback. And net more Jamie German. A hamstring injury in the preseason impeded his progress, but he's gaining confidence, and right now, he is where the Hurricane coaching staff thought he would be, an impact true freshman. Well, each week we see why the Hurricane staff is so excited about this young kid because somewhere during the course of the ball game, he will normally make a big play for you. First and 10, 33 seconds left in the first half. Collins throws it incomplete to stop the clock. Dietrich Clausel, the tight end, covered well by the inside linebacker, Bob Sheridan. So it'll be second and 10 for Miami at the Rutgers 34 and 27 seconds left in the first half. On that last play, you saw where Ryan Collins showed his smarts as he used his feet to get outside, and once there were no one open, threw the ball at Clausel's feet so that it wouldn't get intercepted and he wouldn't have to take the loss. Miami leading 13 to 10, and Ryan Collins would love to put a touchdown on the board here with just 27 seconds left in the half. James Stewart up the middle. Inside the 30 to the 27-yard line. That's a seven-yard gain. It'll bring up third and three, and Miami uses another timeout to stop the clock with 22 seconds to go on the half. Well, Dennis Erickson took a page out of Graber's book there, trying to come with the draw, see if they could pop it up the middle. But uh, the Rutgers defense stayed at home. Now coming into this weekend of play, this is what the top 10 look like, according to the Associated Press. Florida State, number one. Notre Dame at number two. Miami, Nebraska, and Ohio State rounding out the top five. With the Fighting Irish in South Bend, Indiana, on Saturday afternoon, knocked off Charlie Ward and the Seminoles and did it rather convincingly. So we're going to get a new number one next week. And how do you like the job that Lou Holtz and Notre Dame were able to pull off against Bobby Bowden and the unbeaten Seminoles today? Well, anytime you go into South Bend, <laughs> It's tough, and you have to take your hat off to Coach Lou Holtz, and you also have to congratulate the uh, Florida State for what they've done to be number one for as long as they did this year. Well, Dennis Erickson's offense, Nat, has used the clock well on this drive. They've run four plays, and they've used only 27 seconds. 22 seconds left in the second quarter. Important third down situation here. Down and four, the Rutgers 28. to the 10-yard line. And the Hurricanes will get a break as they stop the clock to move the chains. 18-yard pickup as Collins found Harris, the junior wideout from Houston, Texas. 10 seconds, clock running, and Collins stops it with a quick incompletion there. Eight seconds left in the second quarter. Miami has it first and 10 at the Rutgers 11-yard line. Eric, you have to be amazed it with Collins uh, patience and, and his, his leadership because they've got one timeout and he could have used it there, but instead he used his smartness to go up there, down the ball, save that timeout so that if necessary they can still run the football and use that timeout. Jamie German to the bottom of your screen, Harris and Chris T. Jones to the top. the corner and gets out of bounds at the three-yard line with just three seconds left in the first half. Now, a 
decision for Dennis Erickson. Do you go for the sure thing and go for the field goal, or do you try to punch it in on the final play of the first half? The Hurricanes will use a timeout. Dennis Erickson and the Brain Trust will think it over. I don't think there's a choice. I, I think that uh, they need to go for it. They need to put some points on the board. A field goal really doesn't help them here. Uh, they'll still a uh, touchdown will still beat them and to impress the polls which we've talked about they need to score points and they need to run it up here uh, in the second half and this would be a good start to get a touchdown here. Well, you look at the all-time coaching leaders at the University of Miami's outstanding football program and Dennis Erickson rising up the charts with a bullet. Well, the Hurricanes are opting for three. Well, that just goes to show you why I was a player and not a coach. <laughs> I should have knew once I said that he would change his mind. This will be a 20 yard field goal attempt for Pruitt, the sophomore from Birmingham, Alabama. You see the angle as well as he does. Green drive kick straight through the uprights. Miami gets three on the final play of the first half. Kings trailed in this game three to nothing early in the second quarter. They take a 16 to 10 lead into the dressing room halfway through at the Orange Bowl today. And we'll come back with our halftime show right after these reminders on Sunshine Network. And with the running game, look at the time possession that went with it for Rutgers. Well, that's that's what you have to hate if you're the University of Miami's football team. Here you have only had the ball seven minutes and 19 seconds while Rutgers has controlled this football as well as this game. And we're getting set for the second half of our game between Miami and Rutgers. We'll return to the Orange Bowl right after this. Under the bright lights here at the Orange Bowl, the Hurricanes hoping for a much bigger second half than they had in the first. John Benestad will kick it off for Rutgers. So Miami will go to work first. Jonathan Harris and Dexter Siegler. You see the two Hurricane return men, Harris number three, Siegler number 34. Harris did have a couple of first half catches for Miami. Well, Miami needs to take control of this football game early starting the third quarter and they've got a chance because they get the ball first and the opportunity to go up and add to that six point lead that they have. Hurricanes picked up a season high 516 yards of offense last week at Pittsburgh. Siegler on the back pedal. He'll have to down this and Miami will take it at their 20 yard line. First of 10. Well, I suppose that Dennis Erickson had a bunch to say to his group at halftime. Well, I'm pretty sure that he had quite a bit to say, especially knowing that uh, at this point, Florida State has lost to Notre Dame, and here's their opportunity to move up, that they've got to come out and play some good football and, and let the people around the country know that they should be number two. On the other hand, what do you suppose Doug Graber told his Rutgers team? That they're playing a great football game. they just got to keep doing what they've been doing, control the football, and keep Miami's offense on the sideline. Donnell Bennett, the single back behind Ryan Collins. Collins on the roll, being pursued, incomplete, intended for Dietrich Clausel. Clausel starting in the place of injured Sae Tucker. There's big number 83, Dietrich, recruited by Tommy Tuberville out of Gulfport, Mississippi. He was a linebacker in high school, recruited heavily by LSU, Alabama, and the rest of the Southeastern Conference. Here we see the play action with uh, Brian Collins coming out, and here he's he's trying to get the ball out to Clausell in a hurry before Roberts comes up, but he throws it behind him, and that was just him not setting his feet and squaring his shoulders before he threw the football. Second down and 10, blitz coming, and Chris Jones makes the catch. First down, Jones spinning ahead to the 38-yard line. I think that's Chris Jones' first reception today. We haven't had a chance to call his number, and we're used to doing that, so look like they're going to go to their money man to start the second half. His 34th catch brought down by Curtis Trippett. So an 18-yard gain as Ryan Collins found Chris Jones. 55th career reception for the junior from West Palm Beach, Florida. Jones to the bottom of your picture. German in the middle. 
This is James Stewart. Nice run off left tackle following the block of Rudy Barber. Up to the 43-yard line. Gain of five yards. Jameel Jackson, the inside linebacker, at number 41, the leading tackler for Rutgers, and James Stewart, the leading ball carrier for Miami. Five carries in the game, and close to 60 yards rushing. And there's a look at the middle linebacker, Jameel Jackson, a three-year starter out of Elizabeth, New Jersey, just 5'11", but goes 250 pounds. This is Larry Jones, the junior from Gainesville, has the first down. He's in the Rutgers territory at the 46-yard line. Seven-yard gain for Larry Jones and a first down for Miami. Larry Jones is the quicker of the three backs. He has a tendency of getting in the hole as soon as the, the block's made. And here you see him. And he does a good job of picking up his feet. Watch how he picks up his feet when the defender goes after it, running hard, gaining that extra yard. Nice bit of hopping and skipping and jumping for Larry Jones. Gained 11 yards. First drive for Miami here in the third quarter. And Ryan Collins asks for timeout. The Hurricanes in front, 16 to 10. They have it first down and 10 at the Rutgers 46. And we'll be right back to see how this drive progresses after this break on Sunshine Network. Best fried clams in the city and 36 taps. No one sells more draft beer in New York than I do. So when they came to me with Coors Extra Gold, I said, well, what do I need another beer for? Couldn't believe it. Now the bartenders can't pour it fast enough. It seems to just take off. It's amazing. Who'd, who'd have thought? You know what? I think Coors Extra Gold is the best premium beer in the country, without a doubt. You don't have to run a bar to know a good beer. Coors Extra Gold. Get back to real beer. I think it's about the best thing we ever did. Come on, let's mix it up. Let's mix it up. Let's mix it up. There are lots of ways to work up a deep down thirst, and with eight flavors, there are lots of Gatorade ways to quench it. Marlins and Panthers fans, Dave O'Brien here to tell you all about the most important date on the Marlins 94 schedule. Saturday, November 13th is Marlins Select a Seat Day. JRS opens at 9 a.m. so you can pick your season ticket seats for next year. Of course, starting November 15th, you can also order them by phone. Operators will be standing by, so call 1-800-944-HITS. Why season tickets? Well, you get the same seats for all 81 home games, plus special benefits. And since you're at the stadium, you won't have to watch all my commercials. Fans, once again, a reminder that the concert... First drive of the third quarter for Miami underway on a first and ten at their Rutgers 46. Let's go downstairs to Joe Rose. Dennis Erickson, not a very happy coach at halftime in the locker room. Didn't have a lot of nice things to say. I think you've seen the difference already. The team came out a little more pumped up. Plus, they, all, they also know the end of the score with the final outcome of that Notre Dame-Florida State game. Plus, they've had a chance to look at some of the other scores. They know it's time to get real serious about football in the second half of this game. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Joe. Back on October 12th, 1985, Miami defeated Cincinnati 38 to nothing, and that launched this 55-game Orange Bowl winning streak just too shy of tying Alabama's all-time record of wins at home. Well, to maintain that streak, they've got to take care of business here today and do the same thing with Memphis State, and then next year, when the home opener, get a chance to tie the, to, to break the record. On first down, Collins looking to throw, has time, and has a man, Chris Jones, who skips out at the 27-yard line. That's a pickup of 21 yards. Well, Ryan Collins had three receivers on the same side, had his choice, and wasn't able to spot uh, A.C. Tellison going down the field by himself. But he showed some patience and waited for, Ace, uh, for Chris Jones to get open and put the ball on the money. Nice tight spiral delivered by Ryan Collins. And Chris T. Jones, his favorite target. He's been Miami's top pass catcher this year. This is Donnell Bennett, doesn't get much, just a yard to the 25-yard line. Shane Spells, number 97, along with number 40, 
Bruce Spaulding in on the stop of Donnell Bennett, who is down the running, tough to come by. Five carries, just five yards for Bennett today. Well, Rutgers is doing a real good job of running the inside linebackers through and not giving the backs anywhere to run or where to, anywhere to cut back to. Second down, a long nine for Miami at the Rutgers 25-yard line. Jamie German to the top. One setback is Bennett. Good drop for Collins. Has Harris. He cuts in to the 15-yard line. But a 10-yard pickup. Make it a 15-yard pickup and a first down for Miami. Is just running a little simple turnout with uh, Jonathan Harris in the slot, but they're catching Rutgers in a blitz where they're bringing everybody and getting a one on one and being able to take advantage of uh, the great receivers they've got. As you can see here, he just comes out, three step drop, goes straight to Jonathan Harris, who's wide open, and then Jonathan th does a good job of making the first defender, Roberts, miss him. They mark it at the 11 yard line, first and 10 there. So that was a 14 yard hookup. This is James Stewart. Reads his blocks well straight ahead to the five-yard line. Six-yard gain and no messing around for number 28. Good, tough running. He had uh, Clausel, uh, Dietrich Clausel out front as well as uh, <coughs> Lemelski and Tyrell Green. He just did a good job of following his blockers, and you know, that's what a good back will do. He knows when to pop through there and when to follow these guys. As you see Tyrell Green pulling, and he just does a good job of reading the block and just running over its defenders. This is the ninth play of Miami's drive, which began at their 20-yard line. Second down, goal to go from the four. And Larry Jones won't get back to the line of scrimmage. Excellent play by the outside linebacker, Bob Sneathan. The junior out of East Vinland, New Jersey, slanted in and stopped Jones for a loss of one. Well, Sneathan was on a blitz, and Rutgers is blitzing two out of every three downs, and they're going to get burnt here pretty soon with that. So that'll bring up a third down and five. Here's another look Sox. at it. As you see, Sneathan come free. Uh, he was on a blitz, and there was no one to block him. There was no one assigned to him on that play. Ball at the Rutgers six-yard line, third down and five for the Canes. Collins, under a rush, tucks it in, and he'll be shy of the first down, out of bounds at the two. It'll be very near a first down, depending on where they spot it, but even Collins feels the Canes are about a half yard short. In this situation, with three seconds left in the second quarter, Dennis Erickson opted for three. I have a feeling he's going for six here. Well, the odds are with him. Worst, worst case scenario, you do not make it. You got them backed up. You get the ball back in good field position. Your defense go in and hold them. But here's an opportunity to come up with a big play to put your team out front and get close to a two-touchdown lead. Miami's first drive of the third quarter. It started at their own 20. And right now, they'll bring the sticks across. It's probably going to be fourth down and a half a yard to go for the first down at the Rutgers two-yard line. First down, so Ryan Collins does sneak in and pick it up for the Hurricanes. Well, the Hurricanes had just seven first downs in the first half. On this drive, they've picked up five first downs. This is the type of offense that you expect from the Hurricane football team, and now they're starting to move the ball. As you see Ryan going for the first down, knowing what he needs, and just lay, laying his body out, giving up his body to try and get that first down. Good hard nose running by Ryan Collins. Got a big 21-yard scamper to get Miami going in the second quarter. Derek Harris, the lone setback on first and goal. Harris straight ahead, but he won't get in. The 240-pound sophomore from Willow Ridge, Texas, turned back by number 40, Bruce Spaulding, and a host of Scarlet Knights. Well, Rutgers just made a big pile in the center of the football field, and there was just nowhere for Robert Harris to run being that there was not an outside run threat. As you can see, oh, there's just a big pile, a bunch of bodies, and then the defenders coming in from the outside to bring him down. 
Loss of one, second and goal to go from the Rutgers two-yard line. Here's another look at it from the uh, side view, and as you can see, it's just a big pile with all 23 players, 22 players in the middle. Timeout called by Rutgers with 10-15 left in the third quarter, and there's a look at Doug Graber. We talked earlier about the non-home field his team played with this year, having to commute to the Meadowlands about a 45-minute trek away from the campus at Rutgers, but they are redoing the stadium. It'll be ready next year. They'll go from 25,000 capacity to a 42,000 facility on campus, and that should help the Rutgers program. It will not only help the program as far as getting fans in the stands to watch the game, but also it'll help them with recruiting because as kids come to the stadium to watch Rutgers play, they will develop an alliance to that university. Well, don't miss the Miami Dolphins Monday Night Magazine, very popular program for good reason. Paul Kennedy will have Dolphins Ron Heller and Jarvis Williams with him Monday night at 7, only here on Sunshine Network. With Nat Moore and Joe Rose down on the field with good hands, people. I'm Eric Reed, just along for the ride here on Sunshine Network. Third-ranked Hurricanes trying to get it going here in the second half. They lead it 16 to 10, and no telling what the polls will show this week with Notre Dame knocking off number one Florida State. Obviously, the Irish will be number one. The Irish will go to number one, and Miami has a chance to move up to number two, but they haven't shown an impressive uh, game so far. James Stewart heading for the end zone, doesn't get there. Tripped up right at the end zone. So he'll be just a little bit shy, and it'll be third down, goal to go. If we go back and look at this play, here I think James really makes up his mind early because he decides he's going to run over the defender, and the defender slips and keeps him from getting in the end zone, which was Jackson, where he should have ran for the corner and used that speed. Jameel Jackson, a three-year starter, right there to meet Stewart. This will be the 12th play of this drive, and it's a touchdown for Miami. Oh, the Hurricanes march 80 yards in 12 plays on their first possession of the third quarter. Well, Miami was able to get it in as uh, K.C. Jones and the guards, uh, Tyrell Green and Rudy Barber, come off the ball and gave uh, Collins room to go over the top, not allowing the linebacker to hit him before he was able to get across the goal line. That's the fourth rushing touchdown this year for Ryan Collins, and the Canes are going for two. Collins out of the shotgun. for German, and they connect. So the two-point conversion successful. There's your hookup of the future. Ryan Collins, Jamie German. You, you've just said a mouthful. That is a, a hookup of the future. And what you notice about that play was Jamie German used his big body on the, little, on the small defender and just played keep away, similar to basketball, and Ryan Collins put it on the numbers. 13 plays, 80 yards. Collins over the top for the touchdown. Collins to German for the deuce. And the Hurricanes, by two touchdowns, will be right back. The inside story starts here. From the greats of the game to current controversies, nobody covers the big stories in the big leagues like Ed Randall's Talking Baseball. Get the inside story on Sunshine. Zenith presents AVI, advancing color television to a new level with Zenith's highest contrast and sharpest resolution ever. Controlling your VCR, video games, and cable boxes. With Zenith's high-performance audio systems, AVI is Zenith's most advanced feature ever. AVI, tomorrow's technology today. Watch us. Visit C. Whitman TV in St. Cloud to watch and walk away with a great deal on Zenith. Step-by-step -step video training methods. Teaching the mechanics of the Major League Swing benefits players of all ages and ability levels. A valuable addition to any coach's library, too. And it makes a great gift. Thousands have been sold at $39.95. But if you'll call now and use your credit card, you'll pay only $29.95.
Call 1-800-652-2112 for teaching the mechanics of the Major League Swing. That's 1-800-652-2112. This is the tape that gets results. For the latest highlights and insights of the Tampa Bay Lightning and around the NHL, join Terry Crisp as Lightning Strikes every Monday night at 6.30 on Sunshine Network. Back here at the Orange Bowl, the Hurricanes revving up their potentially high-powered offense. Back in the first half, first three times they had the football, it was three and out. Last four times they've had it, three touchdowns and a field goal. Here's another look as you see Ryan Collins going over the top of the uh, front three. The two guards in the center, Casey Jones moving the defenders back, giving, giving Collins room to run. And here we get another look at the two-point conversion as you see Jamie German using his big body to ward off the little defender and come down with a two-point catch. That's a special delivery, Ryan Collins and Jamie German. German really coming on as his true freshman season winds down. And Ryan Collins, what can you say about a young man that some thought would never really get to play quarterback at Miami? He's probably the only guy that didn't feel that way. Well, he showed a lot of patience and didn't give up on himself, and you, you have to be happy for the young man. Terrell Willis running it back, but a 13-play, 80-yard drive. Miami looking to set the tone. First time they touch it in the third quarter. You love those numbers. That, that's the way you set the tone. You control the time, of, and uh, it's, they'll do a good job of now getting the football back and forcing Rutgers to try and score in a hurry. Miami chewing up five and a half minutes of clock time with that 80-yard drive. This is Ray Lucas, the sophomore quarterback. In the first half, he was 6 of 13. Presley rips away from a couple of tackles, but Robert Bass on the piggyback tackle brings him down 33-yard line. That's a gain of three for the sophomore Bruce Presley, who now has 13 carries, 49 yards. And Warren Sapp looks to have turned an ankle. I think he's re-injured the ankle that he hurt last week in the pit game, and you know he's got to be frustrated. He only got to play the first half of last ball game, and now to have to come out to start the third quarter. No oh, big Mr. Sapp sits down, and Dwayne Johnson, the six-foot, five-inch junior out of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, checks in. Second and seven. Lucas deep drop, and has his man. First down for Lance Avina. Up at the 42-yard line. That's a nine-yard gain, maybe 10. Carl Richardson, the strong safety, wrapping up Avina. Ray Lucas looking sharp back in the pocket for Rutgers. Looking extremely sharp. You know, I came in this ball game expecting to see him throw some errant passes, to see the Hurricanes come up with some interceptions, and so far he has not done that. The ball's been on the money, and he's looked extremely sharp throwing the football. Well, the quarterback situation been up in the air last two years for Rutgers, but Doug Graber told us this week that Lucas is firmly our number one man now. Bruce Presley, just a yard off right tackle to the 46-yard line. Robert Bass, number 49. He's been active this evening, the middle linebacker from Brooklyn, New York. Tommy Tuberville doing a nice job with a delicate situation. Bass hurt, second game of the year. Ray Lewis takes his place. The true freshman has 17 tackles in his debut game at Colorado, becomes the Hurricanes' top tackler. And late in the year, Bass is ready to return, and he gets the starting job back. Well, that's the way it's always been with, with Hurricane football is where you do not lose your starting job by getting injured and as a freshman you know that your day is going to come and Ray Lewis is, is handling it with a lot of class. Chris Brantley on the reverse getting in the hurricane territory down to the 48 yard line. Dexter Siegler gave chase looked like a six yard pickup. They'll see where they spot it. Chris Brantley he's made Many big plays through his four-year Rutgers career. 17 career touchdown catches. But he's been quiet lately. Seven touchdown receptions in his first four games. Zero in his last five and a half games. Well, I think in the, in the last few games, Rutgers has been playing from behind, and they've just... Teams have taken him away and have forced other people to beat him. 7.42 left third quarter on third and three. This is Terrell Willis, bounces outside, has the first down. And he's run out by Paul White, 
the senior corner out of Tampa. But Willis advancing it to the 38-yard line. That's a nine-yard pickup on third and three. We get, a, we get another look as we'll see Willis come out of the, the backside as he makes that hard cut and shows his quickness in the boat. But what I like of this play is Paul White does not commit and stays at home and uses the sideline to his advantage. Willis gains 11 yards, averaging seven yards a carry, seventh leading rusher in the country, and number two in all-purpose yards. 185 yards a game accounted for by this man. Number 31, a dasher and a darter, Terrell Willis. He gets to the 34-yard line, pickup of four, and getting up last, the man that nailed him, Robert Bass. So Willis, who started slow today, and those night falls, he's gaining momentum for Rutgers. Well, he's just so quick that uh, he'll make guys miss him. Darren Cryan had him dead to rights, and he just left Darren standing there as he cut back to his left and found a little hole to run to. Willis had 158 yards at West Virginia last Saturday. Second down and six, and Ray Lucas tries Willis again, and nothing doing this time. Patrick Riley, number 43, is a huge defensive tackle from Marrero, Louisiana, first to get there. Patrick Riley, a guy that's coming on for Miami. Seven tackles last week in Chile, Pittsburgh. He's got five sacks here in his junior year. Well, Patrick is starting to play like they expect him to play. He was a starter last year, hurt his shoulder, and was slow getting started this year, but he's starting to come on at the end of the season. Under six and a half minutes to play, third quarter. Miami leading it 24 to 10. This is third and seven for Rutgers. Lucas over the middle, incomplete. Intended for Mario Henry, and a penalty marker down. This is going to go against Carl Richardson, the strong safety, who climbed the back of the intended receiver, Mario Henry. Yeah, C.J. Richardson got there a little early at that time. He was a little over anxious, and it looked like an uncatchable ball. The ball was over the defender's head, so it's going to be interesting to see how the official ruled this. Oh, no foul. No the flag. Foul. Was not Moore, that's an excellent point you raised. Doug Graber's receiver, Mario Henry, unless he jumped on a stepladder, was not going to catch that. Yeah, he needed about a 52-inch vertical to get up and get that one. He runs a good route as he finds the open spot, sets down, and here you see C.J. Richardson goes up over him, but the ball is so far, it never even comes in the screen. It was so high. Well, John Benestad, the senior from Boca Raton, Florida, nailed one from 52 yards in the second quarter. And guess what? Out of the hold of Brian Forte, he will try it again from just a little more than 52 yards. This one, no good. Looked like it had the distance, but hooked to the left with that wind at his back. John Benestad couldn't get that one to go. And we'll be right back. The Canes getting the football back up 14. Back at the Orange Bowl in Miami, six minutes, seven seconds left here in the third quarter. The Hurricanes leading 24 to 10 over Rutgers. Well, the Florida connection for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers, John Benestat out of Boca Raton, Keith Bryant from Largo, Florida. And you see the others that went up to New Jersey to play their college football. Had to feel good for John Benestad, who has struggled through his senior season. They've had breakdowns in their kicking game, but Benestad put Rutgers on the board first back in the early moments of the second quarter when he nailed a field goal from 52 yards away. Uh, they, he'd got to have a lot of friends and family here that was happy to see him get off to a good start and give his team a lead, and you know, it's good for the young man to come home and play well. I'll tell you, Eric, the more we look at it as we go around the country, we're finding more and more teams are recruiting the state of Florida, trying to get some of that Florida talent. Can't blame them. First down for Miami, their 35-yard line. Collins going deep for Tellison. This one overthrown. Those two hooked up in the third quarter for a 55-yard touchdown play. Lightning did not strike twice. Well, I think they had a shot, but uh, A.C. Tellison relaxed and didn't think the ball was coming to him, and he broke his stride, slowed down a little bit, and if he'd have kept running, he might have had a shot at that ball. You talk about arm strength. Collins 
against the wind going about 50 yards deep. Here we see him step up and he gets a lot on this ball. And as you see, AC Tellers now is trying to turn the afterburners back on, but it slowed down. Collins 10 for 19, 207 yards and a touchdown. Here's Stewart turning it upfield and coming very close to the 45 yard line now across for the first down. Needed 10, and he picked up about 10 yards. James Stewart has had a breakthrough sophomore season for Miami. Well, that's the way you like to see James Stewart run with the football. North and south, not a lot of shake and bake. You see him is wide open, and here he knows what he needs for the first down, and watch him just run over tackles as he gets that 10 yards for the first down. Mark Washington, number 23, was holding on for dear life until Bob Sheridan, number 54, came over to help out. Stewart did pick up the first down. Five and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. The Hurricanes on top by 14. This is Bennett. He runs right over the top and gets to the 48-yard line. Spells, along with Roberts, making the stop after a three-yard pickup. On the Big East scoreboard, Saturday afternoon, Virginia Tech at home, racking up 45 points. Maurice DeShazos did an excellent job as their quarterback. West Virginia stays unbeaten in the Big East. They blew out Temple and Philly, 49-7. to Glenn Foley and Boston College, they've gotten better by the week, and they hang up the 33 shutout at Pitt. Second and seven from the 48. Spells putting the heat on Collins. Looking for Daphnis. Oh, ball was right there. But Daphnis could not bring it down. Another picture-perfect delivery for Collins, who was being pursued. That was just an excellent throw. And Ryan Collins, once again, uses his feet to get out of from under pressure, comes out around the pocket, and puts air under the ball. You usually don't see that with a young quarterback where he can hang the ball up and let the receiver run under it. It should have been a completion. Let's take another look. As you see Ryan Collins on the play action, and he just does a great job of play. Makes the first guy miss him. And watch this. Puts air on the ball. Perfect throw. Should have been a reception right off the fingertips. Instead, it's third down and seven. Collins a sprint for it and get it. Collins still on his feet. A 30-yard line, an 18-yard scramble for Ryan Collins. And even when he's running for his life, looks as cool as ice. Well, you, you would have thought he was going to go out of bounds after he'd gotten the first down, but he sort of fooled everybody and turned it upfield and went for an additional seven or eight yards. But... He, here you see him scrambling, and he's picking up his blocker, and Chris Jones did a good job of seeing it would have had to clip the guy and not throwing his body around to not make the silly penalty. Actually, a 22-yard gain for Ryan Collins, who has added so much to this Miami offense. 39 yards rushing, including a touchdown. He's also thrown for a touchdown today. The quick strike, incomplete, intended for Chris Jones running the slant. Ball's a little bit low, but uh, sometimes the receiver has to help the quarterback out. It was a ball that was catchable, but it was not on the money. One of the few times today that we've seen Ryan Collins not put the ball on the numbers. There's a good look at Ryan Collins, who succeeded Chris Corciani as the basketball point guard at Hialeah Miami Lakes High School. He's a terrific athlete and a guy that makes his teammates better. A point guard has to do that, so does a quarterback. 422 left, third quarter, second and ten. Collins going for the end zone and Tellison. Great catch. No, he lost it. Tellison in between two defensive backs. Number 22, Roberts. Number 23, Washington. And A.C. Tellison nearly came away with it. Nearly came up with another great acrobatic catch. But that just goes to show you how much Ryan Collins believes in his receivers and their ability that he can throw it up for grabs, knowing that these big receivers can go up and take it away from the little small cornerbacks. Here you see he's got plenty of time. And he sees A.C. Tellison going down the sideline one-on-one. -on -one, and he just throws it up high. Perfect pass, and they had an opportunity to come away with six. Third down and ten at the Rutgers 30. Here comes the rush, and Collins is decked. The right out.
outside linebacker Bob Sneathan able to sack Ryan Collins from the blind side. And Collins doing a good job just to hold on to the football. Yeah, he was in his motion getting ready to deliver the football, but had the, the presence of mind to put the ball away. He just came free on a blitz, and there was no one to pick him up. Just a good job of holding on to the football by Ryan Collins there. Bob Sneathan's fifth sack of the season. He's a second-year starter, Sneathan. Mike Chrissy under a rush and against the wind hangs it high for Chris Brantley, who makes the fair catch at the 13-yard line. Now that sack was a big play. It knocked Miami back out of field goal range to, to keep him from adding to that lead. So that was a big play by Bob Sneathan with the big sack. 23-yard punt and no return. Rutgers trailing 24 to 10 with 3.29 left in the third. And they'll get it first and 10 at their 13. Now you see the difference in Miami's offense. First half, just seven minutes and 19 seconds of ball possession. And on their first drive of the third quarter, they ate up much clock, scored a touchdown and do almost the same on their second possession. Well, they're doing a better job of running the football. Bruce Presley for a couple of yards. Let's go downstairs to Joe Rose. Rutgers offensive philosophy today, one play at a time. It seems to be working for him. I think at this point through three quarters, they're a very happy football team to be this close. When they look at the end of the day, at the end of the day, time of possession could be very impressive. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Joe. Boy, he looked so cold at Pittsburgh last week. You've got to tell him to pack the winter clothes when we go north now. Well, you know, Joe, Joe's one of those guys that uh, he thinks he's always in Florida. And he's a California <laughs> boy, and he was sort of surprised when he got up there. He said they told me it was going to be 65 degrees. Mario Henry making the catch from Ray Lucas on second down. Picked up 11 yards and a Rutgers first down. First down. Rutgers' ability to run the football, Eric, has gotten Miami where the linebackers are up and they're not getting a good pass drop, so playing a zone defense, Lucas has got plenty of time and big gap to throw the football in. First down and 10 for Rutgers. Their 28-yard line, two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Lucas down the middle for his tight end, just out of the reach of Marco Battaglia. Battaglia, a New York City kid out of Queens, New York. He went to St. Francis Prep, which is the same high school that brought Bill Bakel to Rutgers. And Bakel, still in the NFL, played with the Raiders, and now earning his weekly paycheck for the New York Jets. One of the great all-time tackle, uh, nose tackles, but there we see Kevin Patrick on a speed rush, beating the left tackle, and coming around, hitting Lucas just as he releases the football. Kevin Patrick. 20 and a half career sacks, seven and a half coming in his senior season. Second and ten, here's Presley bouncing it outside and doesn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Warren Sapp has shaken off the ankle injury and he shook down Bruce Presley for no gain. Yeah, Warren Sapp didn't go for that uh, play action. They ran the draw earlier in the ball game at the end of the first half for a big play, 55 yards, and this time the Hurricane defense stayed at home and played the draws. You see them react to what they see, and here you see Ray Lewis, everybody coming in, all being in on the tackle. Ray Lewis can pursue the football. Third down and 10 for Rutgers. Lucas again on the sideline overthrows Chris Brantley. Harris Harris, the free safety, had the best shot at catching that football. The Rutgers will punt it back to Miami. 144 to go in the third. And the Hurricanes on top, 24 to 10. Another chance for Jamie German, the freshman from Fort Myers, Florida. And German leading the Big East in punt returns. Brantley, number two. The Hurricanes in Morgantown to take on West Virginia in a Big East showdown of unbeatens next Saturday. Fair catch for German at the 30-yard line. A 32-yard punt for Nick Sharametta of Rutgers. Eric, I think Jim is starting to make up his mind ahead, ahead of time. You know, he had two blockers on one defender, and he had a chance to go with that ball. Pretty night here at the Orange Bowl. Game times at 4 o'clock is a beautiful experience here at the Orange Bowl. The sun sets, 
the moon over Miami as you can see the lights of the city off in the near distance. First and ten, Collins nearly picked off. Chris Jones, the intended receiver, and a good play by the defensive corner, Mike Fullman, a redshirt freshman out of Roselle, New Jersey. They tell us he's a guy that's coming on strong for Rutgers. Well, Mike Fullman just settled on this red this all the way and breaks on the ball and had an opportunity to come away with the interception, but Chris Jones was able to keep him from making a clean catch of the football. Second down and 10 for the Canes. Chris Jones, wide left at the top, German in the middle, and Jonathan Harris nearest to Ryan Collins. On setback is Bennett. He gets the delay, hurdles a man, breaks a tackle, and advances to the 37-yard line. Seven yards for Bennett, all by himself. Bennett reminds me a lot of a great fullback that I played with, Larry Zucker, how he just balls up, protects the football, and then he keeps those big thighs, those big, le big legs just moving as you see him hurling tackles, running through tack, and he comes up with five yards on what should have been a nothing play. Donnell Bennett with over 500 yards rushing here in his junior season. On third and short, intercepted. Anthony Cawthon, a defensive end, picking it off out in the left flat. So Ryan Collins intercepted for the first time today and for the sixth time this season. Seven-yard return. I don't think he ever saw the, saw the defender because on the snap of the ball, the defender just turned and ran straight to, to Chris Jones here left Jonathan Harris and he's able to come up with the with the interception great job by the senior Anthony Cawthon out of Teaneck New Jersey and that was a poorly thrown ball first and ten for Rutgers 52 seconds to play in the third quarter the Scarlet Knights trailing by two touchdowns here's Willis brought down Shoot top tackle by Ray Lewis at the 30-yard line. That's a three-yard gain. You can't help but notice number 52 right in the middle of Miami's defense now. Well, he's just got so much quickness, and he does a good job of flowing to the football. That no matter which way you go, if they turn it back, he's going to be there to make the play. There's Sugar Ray Lewis. 6'1", 216 pounds, a true freshman out of Lakeland, Florida. He has started five games this year and is... Miami's leading tackler. Second down and seven. And the backup fullback, Wes Bridges. That's just his third carry all season. The senior from Trenton, New Jersey, to the 26-yard line, a gain of four. And that'll bring up a third down and about a yard to go. Check it, third down and three. And that's the end of three quarters here at the Orange Bowl in Miami. We'll come back for quarter number four with the Canes leading by 14. Fireworks outside the Orange Bowl, more than we've had inside the Orange Bowl today. Eric Reed with Nat Moore and Joe Rose, a pair of former Miami Dolphins. We're set for the fourth quarter here on Sunshine Network, nighttime here in the city of Miami. And fourth quarter time for the Hurricanes. 24 to 10. Miami on top. A weekend where the number one ranking changes hands. Notre Dame at home. Knocked off Florida State today. So the Irish will be number one. The question looming, who's number two? Well, it'll be kind of interesting to see if uh, Florida State drops below the University of Miami, and there will be a lot of talk if they do. So it's going to be interesting, but Miami has to continue to win to even pose that problem. Terrell Willis on third down and three. No problems gaining the first down. Willis brought down by Twan Russell, but he gains nine yards, first and ten for Rutgers at the 20-yard line as we start the fourth period. You know, I'm impressed with the Rucker coaching philosophy. They have not abandoned their game plan. They're down 14 points, but they're still running the football. First down, second down. They're trying to keep Miami's defense off balance. Willis, the lone setback behind Ray Lucas, who has gone all the way at quarterback for Rutgers today. Lucas dodging his way 
to the 10 yard line and inside the 10 out of bounds at the nine. 11 yards on the scramble pickup for Ray Lucas and another Rutgers first down. Another first down running with the football. Very elusive quarterback that can come out of the pocket. Three hurricane defenders had a shot at him and neither of them were able to bring him down without him picking up the first down. Here we get another look at it. Play action pass. Hurricanes back in his own defense and Look at the moves that he makes as he darts outside. Once again, Ray Lewis misses him, picks up 12 yards, first down. First and goal at the Miami 9. This is Willis weaving his way to the seven-yard line. Okay, what? Ray Lewis, Carl Richardson, Juan Russell in on the hit. All of the Rutgers backs do a good job of following their blocks, showing a lot of patience, picking their way, finding that hole, sliding left or right, picking up those extra yards. This has been a confidence booster in a way for Rutgers. Scoreless through one quarter, Rutgers on the board first, three to nothing they led. Trailed 16 to 10 at halftime. They trail it 24 to 10 here, but they're threatening. Second and goal from the eight. Lucas rolling. Lucas throwing, touchdown Rutgers. Mario Henry grabbing the eight-yard touchdown. Mario Henry did, did a good job that time of finding the open spot in the end zone as he slid behind Terrell, uh, Terrace Harris, and Lucas got him the football for the touch. For Ray Lucas, that is touchdown pass number six. For Mario Henry, touchdown catch number two on the season. Our only look at Brian Forte today as the holder for John Benestad. Who pops the point after three? Well, Miami had given up just 16 points in their four previous Big East games. Today, Rutgers has pasted 17 on the Orange Bowl scoreboard. Back for more in a moment. Fans, football season is well underway, and it's time to get your sportswear into shape. And when it comes to the pros, there's no substitute for authentic pro-line sportswear, like these NFL slice print pants by Zubaz. These are the same pants you see the pros wear on the field every Sunday. And for the women, check out these NFL shoulder print sweatshirts. These quality heavy sweatshirts are perfect for the football season. You won't find these just anywhere, but you can order them by calling 1-800-NFL-GIFT. The Zubaz pants are just $36.99 and are available in all sizes for these selected NFL teams. The sweatshirts are only $29.99 and are available for these NFL teams. Both make a great gift for yourself or any football fan. So don't take chances on imitations. Call today and wear what the pros wear. To order, call 1-800-635-4438 and ask for source number 8000. That's 1-800-NFL-GIFT. Call now. Miami Hurricane football. Live the tradition at Trading Card Day as the Hurricanes take on the Memphis State Tigers. For tickets, call 1-800-GO-CANE. Well, the interception by Anthony Cawthon against Ryan Collins set up Rutgers' touchdown. They go 33 yards in six plays, and here's the eight-yard touchdown hookup. Here you see Ray Lucas coming out, and he's reading his receiver all the way and just does a good job as Terrace Harris lose sight of Henry, Mario Henry, on the play, and he's able to come down with the touchdown. So after the turnover, a 33-yard six-play drive. Well, what Miami is uh, envisioning here, sorry if I cutting you off, is they're starting to see exactly what Ryan Collins does to other teams with his ability to come outside of the pocket and make big plays as we start to look at Ray Lewis doing the same thing for Rutgers. Dexter Siegler to the right, Jonathan Harris also back as Benestad hits it end over end. This is Siegler from the four. 
after Siegler running it back to the 28-yard line. A 24-yard kickoff return for the fifth-year senior out of Avon Park, Florida. At the 17 points surrendered by Miami's defense, today, the most they have given up since Colorado scored 29 against the Canes in weekend number three. Actually, the Canes gave up 28 in losing to Florida State as well, but very rarely have they given up this many points. Very rarely do you see a hurricane defense get pushed around the way they're getting pushed around today uh, defensively, but uh, offensively, you've got to take charge when the defense is having a tough day. It's up to the offense to put more points on the board and help you win the football game. Donnell Bennett tripped up by Bressel as he came across the 30-yard line. Good stop by Mike Bressel. Bennett gains three, and we've got an injured Rutgers defender. Mike Fullman, the injured defensive back, he tried to make the hit on Donnell Bennett. Well, here on Sunshine Network, the Red Hot Miami Heat back in action Wednesday night. Pre-game show at 7 o'clock with Dave Lamont. Jack Ramsey and yours truly will have the action. Carmelo, John Stockton, and the Jazz to, against, to go against Miami. The Heat off to their best start ever. Three and one. They've won three in a row, including a huge comeback win at Orlando Friday night. Oh. Fullman's okay. And it's second down and seven for Miami. All at the Hurricane, 31. Miami leading by just seven points. Ryan Collins has gone all the way for the Canes at quarterback, and he is brought down back at the 25-yard line by Rashad Swinger, number 99, a 290-pound redshirt freshman who blew out of the chute, was all over Collins. Well, Swinger just beat Rudy Barber on the snap of the football. It took the inside and was able to get upfield and come down with the sack. Ryan Collins feel the pressure and start to step up, knowing he's, he's got to get out of there, but he's not able to elude Swinger as he make the sack. Third down, a dozen as you look at big young Rashad Swinger. Out of the shotgun, Collins. Aiming it for Chris Jones. That is a huge first down pickup and nearly went all the way. Saving tackle made by number 28, Derek Ward. As it stands, a 24-yard gain and a huge first down pickup for Miami. Big first down. First down is sorely needed. With Rutgers scoring on their last possession. Chris Jones just does a great job. You know, he's 6'3", very tall, athletic uh, young man that can go up and get the football because this ball is up high. He goes up, gets it, and comes out running and is one step away from going for six. From midfield, first down give is to James Stewart, and he cannot turn it upfield. The defense strung it out, and Jameel Jackson, number 41, the inside linebacker, prevented James Stewart from turning it upfield. Well, Rutgers' defense is doing a good job of flowing to the football and not allowing those backs to get squared up and turned upfield. But you'll like to see the Miami running attack start to go more at them. You know, take a shoulder and try and run through the defender and, and use that power they have. Doug Graber looking at it from the Rutgers' perspective. His team trailing by just a touchdown. They want the ball back. Second down and 10 for the Canes. Allen standing in. Great catch by Jamie German. Ryan Collins put it right there, and Jamie German, the freshman, plucked it out of the air, out of the 31-yard line. An 18-yard connection. Eric, he makes it look so easy. He's just such a gifted athlete. He just, he's coming across the middle on a square end and just reaches up and plucks the ball out of the air. Good soft hands. Look at the concentration as he just reaches back, catches the football, comes down running. That was the second catch today for German. First and 10 for Miami at the Rutgers 32. Allen's once more. 
And Cowan gets more. A.C. Tellison skipping out at the Rutgers 15-yard line. A 16-yard gain. Collins again spreading it around. What we've seen today is both teams bringing the quarterback out. And as we know, Ryan Collins does a good job of coming out and throwing on the run. And just an excellent pass to A.C. Tellison putting the ball on the money. Well, this is not a case of the Hurricanes trying to pad a score. They're trying to seal the deal and win this football They're game. They're trying to survive because Rutgers come in here with the idea that they can win this football game and was not going to lay down. First down and 10 for Miami at the Scarlet Knight 15. This is James Stewart. Ripped away from number 23, Mark Washington, and picks up four yards down to the Rutgers 11. 11-10 11 left in our ball game tonight. Second down at six. The James Stewart had the 49-yard touchdown run back in the second quarter. Here's another look at it. You see James Stewart, the play started off tackling. You see him cutting back, running through tacklers to pick up five yards. Donnell Bennett. He blasted through the hole on the right side and gets near the first down marker at the five-yard line. Needed six, gained at least five. Going to be third down and one for Miami. Under ten and a half to play in the game now. Good tough running by Donnell Bennett, but even more so, great blocking at the point of attack as the offensive line and, and tight end just blew the Rutgers defenders back to give him room to run. Derek Harris in the backfield now, along with Bennett. Harris, the up man in the slot right on third and one. And Bennett may be short. That's an excellent defensive play made by number 91, Big Keith Bryant, the 270-pounder from Largo, Florida. And no gain on the play. An injured Rutgers player, so an official's timeout. And an expression can tell you a lot. Dennis Erickson wouldn't say he's overly content with the way this game is played. Well, Den Dennis is earning his money today. He's coming up with another critical decision. You've got fourth and shot. Do you accept the field goal or go for the field goal, or do you go for the first down to try and keep the drive alive? It's been a little bit of a problem for Miami. You would never tell with their one loss mark at 7-1. and one. But against the teams they are heavily favored against this year, the Canes have started slow. And tonight, tonight, not just a slow start, this has been a tough game for them all the way. It's been a very tough game, and I, and I think Rutgers was not given the, the due credit that they deserve. You know, a team that's scoring 35 points a ball game can't be all bad. It's just that their defense were allowing so many points they came in here with a losing record. Today, they've shown that they can run the football, and they can control the football. And if you control the football, you'll always be in the ball game. Well, the injured Rutgers player is Michael Roberts. He's the left side cornerback, and let's see what happened. As you see, Donnell Bennett running upfield, running through tacklers. And I think he got hit by his own man. Looking at the instant replay, it's hard to tell. But he's up and uh, walking off on his own power. We've got a timeout here at the Orange Bowl. Nine minutes and 46 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. The Hurricanes leading it by a touchdown, and they're looking for another score. And we'll be right back. For the latest highlights and insights of the Tampa Bay Lightning and around the NHL, join Terry Chris as Lightning Strikes every Monday night at 6.30 on Sunshine Network. Before you buy your next car, you could test it like this. Or you can read consumer reports. Before you buy your next washer or dryer, you could test it like this. Or you can read consumer reports. Consumer reports test brand name products every day to tell you which models were worth the money and which were not. And now you can put Consumer Reports to the test with a risk-free trial issue. Consumer Reports gives you independent test results on vehicles, refrigerators, TVs, blue jeans, 
auto insurance, and more. We tell you the brand names and give you the model numbers to help you get better value for your dollar. Call now for your risk-free trial issue. If you like it, pay just $22 for 11 more issues, 12 in all, plus the 1994 buying guide. Or write cancel on the bill, return it, and owe nothing. You'll also get the 1993 buying guide free with your paid subscription. Call 1-800-652-2112. Call now and put us to the test. The word gets rocky in the ACC. Who will prevail? Who will play spoiler? It's an all-out struggle for conference dominance. The ACC, it's where the action is. Virginia and Clemson, Sunday night at 7 on Sunshine. Under the bright lights of Miami's Orange Bowl, the Hurricanes looking to make it 56 in a row here. They lead it 24 to 17 over a Rutgers team out of the Big East that has played extremely well tonight. They were an underdog by more than 30 points. And that more, fourth down, less than a yard for Miami. Well, it's academic. Yes, seniors who have already earned their most important goals, their bachelor's degree, Robert Bass in criminal justice, Darren Krein, business management, Kenny Lopez, Tom Patterson, and how about Mr. Paul White out of Tampa's Hillsborough High School, he received his degree in international finance. Big play here, fourth down, less than a yard at the Rutgers six. And Donnell Bennett straight ahead for the first down. Donnell Bennett on the night, 10 carries, 26 yards. James Stewart has 10 carries for 79 yards. And the numbers on Ryan Collins, 13 of 27, 255 yards. Good tough running by Donnell Bennett as he meets Jackson in the hole and drives him back, picking up the first down. You know, Ryan Collins came up, and I think they might have had a run pass option of him coming out and saw that they were spread out and checked to that play. Just inside the Rutgers five-yard line. Derek Harris, the lone setback, and Rutgers calls for time. Rutgers. So the Scarlet Knights stop the clock with nine minutes and 25 seconds left in the fourth quarter. I think they just used their last time out, but uh, you know, there's no reason to save it for them to have a chance. They've got to stop Miami from getting in there. And you know, if you're not sure about the defense, you don't take a chance. You call timeout, reset your defense with an opportunity to try and stop the Hurricanes' offense. Well, when you look at the best of the decade in college football. Guess who is at the top of the list? Nobody's done it better than Miami in the last 10 years and four national titles. Proof of the pudding. Four national titles and still in the hunt for the fifth one. And a team that uh, over the past 10 years has played everybody and beat everybody in the big ball game. Well, I guess the big question this week, where do the pollsters put Florida State? They were number one before going to South Bend on Saturday afternoon and losing decisively to Notre Dame. Do they drop to two or do they drop farther than that? It will be an interesting question. This is the 12th play of Miami's drive. First down and goal at the four yard line. Again, Derek Harris, the lone setback. Collins firing, touchdown. Touchdown Miami and the first career touchdown for Gerard Daphnis. Ryan Collins is just a magician with the football. He came out, Rutgers had him boxed in where he couldn't get outside. He had the presence to stop, find his open receiver, and drill it in to Daphnis for the touchdown. Second touchdown pass for Ryan Collins today. Numbers 10 and 11 for the talented sophomore. And Gerard Daphnis, a very interesting target. We'll tell you about him after the Dane Pruitt point after. Meaningful touchdown for Miami. Rutgers had closed it down with just a seven-point lead. But the Canes go marching and scoring, and they lead it 31 to 17. I was talking to Art Kehoe, who coaches the tight ends at Miami. Gerard Daphnis, a redshirt freshman who just made the touchdown grab, 
He was originally number three on the depth chart, but with the injury to Sahi Tucker, he moves up. Now, Daphnis was not recruited by any school other than Miami. He made no visits to any other colleges. And the main reason why, Daphnis played just two games in his senior year at Norland High School. The coach decided to go with all younger players to help turn that program around, and very few schools knew about Daphnis. The Hurricanes were aware of him because Gerard Daphnis had come to a Miami, University of Miami, summer camp. They took note of Daphnis then, and it pays off now. Here we get another look at the touchdown here as we see Collins coming out. He can't get outside. He stops, sets his feet, throws the touchdown to Gerard Daphnis, and Eric, in, in, in answer to what you said, you know, that's bad for everybody else. You know, it was, it was good for University of Miami that they were the only ones that knew about this young man, but you know, it's good to see him here in Miami, and uh, I know all our viewers are happy to have him as a hurricane. Especially when you consider that he's a homegrown product out of Norland High School in Miami. Good recruiting for the Hurricanes has paid off huge dividends over the years, and again, just a moment ago. So that's 31 to 17, little bit of breathing room for the Hurricanes. This is Terrell Willis from the five, up the middle, big yards, and look at the freshman go. Al Shipman giving chase, and Shipman running Willis out after a 51-yard kickoff return, and Nat, this is becoming a sore point for Miami. Their kickoff coverage has left something to be desired. It's almost as if the defenders are going down trying to avoid the wedge, and Rutgers is just doing a good job of running the wedge, and you see Willis just follow it through, breaks through, and it's off to the races, but Al Shipman does a good job of warding him to the sideline, not letting him get started upfield. Well, we call Terrell Willis number 31, Rutgers' home run hitter. I think you're getting the idea. He's a talented first-year player. Bruce Presley met right at the line of scrimmage by big, bad number 43, Patrick Riley. Bill Riley at 6'6", 283 pounds. When he hits you, you know it. Well, Patrick Riley is the, the one defensive tackle from last year that they expected to step forward this year and become their sack leader to, to help those defensive ends and getting pressure to the quarterback. But Warren Sapp has been that guy. And now Patrick Riley is starting to come on. Second down, 11 for Rutgers. Out of the shotgun, Lucas retreats. The screen to Presley. Bruce Pe Presley still on his feet, finally dropped again by Patrick Riley, but well downfield to the 32-yard line. Pickup of 12, a first down if it stands. Penalty marker back at the Rutgers 41. And it's another hold against the Scarlet Knights. So erase the fine pickup by the sophomore Presley. Hey, Rutgers executed a perfect screen except for the hole. The middle screen was well set up, well designed, and it fooled Miami as Presley did a good job of hiding in behind his blockers, waiting for them to get out of the way. He catches the football. And I'll tell you, we've been raving about Miami's backs and how they're running over people, bruising people. Presley does a pretty good job there himself. That is a very impressive one-two punch for Rutgers. Bruce Presley Holding and Terrell Willis. I guess the, the shame of it all for Rutgers. Yards, the their the best pile, two offensive replay, players down. both play the same position. Both play the, the same position, but, uh, you know, when you've got to give it to one or the other, it ain't all bad. <laughs> Now, Doug Graber told us that he'd like to get each one, Presley and Willis, 20 carries a game. And he's looking for ways each week to play them more side by side. Now the six penalties have been costly for the Scarlet Knights. They have it now. Second down and 28 would have been first and 10. And Patrick Riley playing in another gear right now. He stops Terrell Willis. No gain. Another guy in another gear. Joe Rose downstairs. We're with Ryan McNeil, former Miami All-American, and now with the Detroit Lions on a bye week. Comes home once again, about the 10th guy this year, Ryan, to come home. What do you think of your former team? Well, I think they're young. I think they got a, a lot of going up to do as far as uh, replacing everybody. I think they're doing a good job so far. You had mentioned to me earlier, you said, Joe, they're just a young team. They got to learn to pick it up all the time. They do it. They got to be on a, on a consistent basis, not uh, when everything's on the line. You got to be day in and day out. Good luck to you in Detroit. Thank you. 
All right, back up to you guys. Third down and 31, and Ray Lucas gets only a little bit of it back, sliding up to the 47, 48-yard line. Brought down by the rangy outside linebacker from LaPorte, Texas, Corwin Francis. Just an eight-yard gain, fourth down and 30. Seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. The Hurricanes on top, 31-17. And another opportunity for Jamie German to turn on this home crowd at the Orange Bowl, 52,561 in the house tonight. I'm still waiting to see him break one. I'd like to see him make that first move and then just turn on the afterburners and get up field. Bouncing ball. German not likely to touch it. And it is down inside the Miami 20-yard line. The Hurricanes leading by 14 and about to go back to work. Some of the happy Hurricane fans on homecoming weekend at the University of Miami. Beautiful night here. And, of course, they love their Hurricanes here in Miami. And all that's left? Well, a major test next week. Miami will have to play a whole lot better next Saturday in Morgantown, West Virginia. The Mountaineers unbeaten in the Big East. And then it's back home to close out the regular season against Memphis State. Next week will be a stern test and will help define this season for Miami, Nat. Well, next week is a victory that they've got to have if they want to stay in the hunt for the national championship. 15th completion of the day for Ryan Collins. To James Stewart, he advances it 13 yards to the 33. Finally brought down by number 94, Anthony Cawthon. Now James Stewart, he's gotten better every game as a running back and also, Nat, improving as a receiver out of the backfield. Oh, I think Dennis is trying to find as many ways as possible to get the ball to James Stewart in the open field because of his speed, and they're doing a good job of hitting him on little flare passes where he's getting out there and he's able to utilize his speed for big games. Pretty good numbers for Collins today in just his fourth start. Thrown for two scores, run for another. On first down, Donnell Bennett's turn, and he is banged around up at the 37-yard line. Hard-nosed gain of five yards for Donnell Bennett. Both Bennett and Larry Jones over 1,000 career yards rushing. Well, that's that uh, one, two, three punch. Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, Bennett, and we've seen a lot of James Stewart, but I think Larry Jones is a little injured. We haven't seen him in the second half. I, I notice he's taking his shoulder pads off, but, uh, you know, when you got three quality backs like they do, you, you don't miss Jones as much. Just five and a half minutes to go in our game tonight. Hope you've enjoyed the coverage here on Sunshine Network. James Stewart weaving through, breaking a tackle. And look at the big man rumble. Oh my. The Rutgers 39-yard line. James Stewart, a power runner who is also a nimble runner. Very nimble. Good feet. This is what you like to see him doing, running up in the hole and then finding a hole to the left or right, not being strung out. Here you see him cut back, does a good job. Dappering in the hole, making people miss as he picks up his feet. If the umpire get out of the way, he might have picked up another 20 yards. Good running by James Stewart. James Stewart picking up 24 yards on the carry. And on the day, 11 carries, 103 yards rushing. So he's just a yard shy of his single game best. End around on first down, and Jonathan Harris had to go deep into the backfield and only gets a couple of yards to the 37-yard line. Michael Roberts, the left side corner, stayed at home, made a good play on Jonathan Harris. Well, Rutgers just did a good job of playing their defense. They weren't full. Everybody was in their lanes, and the play was just strung out from the beginning, and the corner was able to come up and make the tackle. Here you see they're not full as you've got a lot of folks out there from Rutgers not giving Jonathan Harris anywhere to run with the football. Roberts, who made the tackle, had a brother named Marshall who played at Rutgers and now plays in the CFL. Second down, nine for Miami. From the 38, Collins rolling. Delivering. Jones out there, but it's picked off. Curtis Trivet intercepted it. And if Collins threw it a few yards higher or deeper, he would have had his third touchdown because Jones had Trippett beat. 
Well, he knows that he just didn't get enough on it. He misjudged it. Didn't get it out there, but I'd like to have seen Jones come back and fight for the football, knowing that it was going to be a jump ball because it was a short pass. Instead, he thought he would get it there. Second time, Ryan Collins has been intercepted today. So he's thrown two touchdowns and two interceptions. Here we get another look at, as you see, good play action. There's not a defender applying pressure to Collins at all. He steps up, throws the football, and right there is where Chris Jones needed to come back and help him out a little bit. If you can't catch it as a receiver, your job is to make sure that no one catches it. At what point, and you know this better than most because you played in the National Football League at an incredibly high level for 13 years, at what point when you're open by two or three yards do you make the decision as a wideout to come back? As you, as you see that defender coming into the lane between you and the football, you know you've got to get there. On first down, Terrell Willis goes from his end zone up to the three-yard line. Going back to what we were talking about, it, it, it's at that point that you've got to make a decision that you now are a defender, not an offender, and you got to get back and make sure that the ball is not intercepted. Here we get another look at Terrell Willis doing a good job of picking his holes following his block with uh, Ray Lewis coming in for the tackle. Yes, Ray Lewis swinging down Terrell Willis after a gain of four, second and six, 325 left here in the game. This is Willis again. This time he runs into Ray Lewis, James Burgess, and Kevin Patrick. Burgess. Just a gain of one. It brings up a third down and six. 31-17 Miami. Rutgers out of timeouts. The Hurricanes really have no need to stop the clock. Well, I'm wondering... You know, if Rutgers is not concerned with just not getting the score ran up, you got three minutes left to go in the ball game, and you're still handing the ball off down on your own three-yard line instead of putting the ball in the air. I mean, when, when are you going to abandon the run and throw the football? Right now, and throwing it right to the Rutgers bench. Kevin Patrick in hot pursuit of Ray Lucas. And uh, a bit of extracurriculars ongoing in the Rutgers end zone. Fourth down and six. Miami does get the football back following the turnover. Here, here we see Kevin Patrick coming in, making the hit just as the ball is released. And, you know, that's a clean shot because the quarterback's outside the pocket. And, you know, it's hard for a guy to hold up when you're going as fast as Kevin Patrick was coming up to try and put pressure on him. Nick Sharametta, no margin for error. He is standing nine yards deep in a 10-yard end zone. Jamie German awaits the boot at the Rutgers 43. Bad punt, which takes a good Rutgers bounce to the 41-yard line, a 36-yard punt for Rutgers. 227 left in our football game tonight. We're coming right back. Back at the Orange Bowl, time is winding down here in the game for Rutgers. They made a good bid at a major upset, and Nat, to review your keys for Rutgers, how well did they do today? Well, they did a fantastic job of the first two, and that was to avoid the turnover. They haven't turned the ball over all day, I don't think. They ran the ball well, and they kept Miami's offense off the field, especially early in the ball game, and then in the second half, and at the uh, end of the third quarter, Miami's offense started to come alive. But overall, Rutgers set out what they intended to do, except win the score of the scoreboard. Well, Ryan Collins has gone all the way today, and you see the second half been much better for Miami in terms of possessing the football. Ryan Collins, 15 for 30, 271 yards, which is a season high for Collins. He's thrown for two touchdowns and run for another. On first down, Collins being chased. Collins going to keep it, get by spells, and drag a man to the 33-yard line. Excellent run by Ryan Collins. Sean Smith finally brought him down, the free safety, but Collins able to slip past Shane Spells. Well, it's just great to have a weapon like Ryan Collins, a guy that can hurt you both with the pass as well as running with the football if nothing is there. And that was another perfect example where he was able to do it with his feet. 
Collins picking up seven yards. If you're looking at him from home, keep in mind this is just a sophomore, only his fourth start. The sky the limit for Ryan Collins next two years. James Stewart trying to turn it upfield. Cannot. Good pursuit by the Rutgers defense. Number 15, Earl Simmons, who was a wide receiver until the suspensions a week ago. Dave Olmstead, the executive producer of University of Miami football here on Sunshine Network. Good chance for us to recognize all the great folks at Sunshine who make Miami football possible. And this is likely our last telecast of the Miami Hurricane season. The Memphis State game probably going to be picked up by ESPN. We've had a grand time bringing you Miami football this year here on Sunshine. Third down, five for Miami. Ball at the Rutgers, 36. That's complete for a first down, Gerard Daphnis. We told you about him earlier, and that's the third catch today for Daphnis. Well, Miami keeps possession, but chains move again. Another first down. You have to marvel at the uh, Hurricanes' uh, depth as one guy goes down there, but bring in a young guy that can step right in and play as a freshman or sophomore and keep this offense moving or this defense moving, and that's why each year they compete for championships. Steve LeBeau and Jeff McCain up here with us, along with Kerry Coe. We thank all of them for their great help this season. Stewart going the wrong way, and he is brought down back at the 31-yard line. That's a loss of three. Stewart. Brian Sheridan, a true freshman at inside linebacker, in on the stop. You see all the people that go into bringing you one of these telecasts. Sheridan. Under a minute left. Of course, Nat, it has been a pleasure working with both you and Joe Rose this year. Really enjoyed it and hope we get a chance to do it again next season. And likewise, I've enjoyed myself this year. And you know, I think we're both blessed having a program like the University of Miami to uh, telecast. No question. One of the premier college football programs in America our privilege to help bring it to you. On L. Bennett, on second and 14, gets a little bit back inside the 26-yard line, a six-yard gain for Bennett. So the Hurricanes will win their 56th in a row here at the Orange Bowl and will advance their record to 6-0 in the Big East, 8-1 overall. Well, it's Rut Rutgers will drop to 4-6. And their losing streak at four. And Brian Forte, you see him with a helmet up top of his head. Must have been a long night for him coming back to the place where his college career began. And he comes back riding the bench. Come back riding the bench as well as injured and not having the opportunity to play. Um, you know, that's got to be a tough situation for a young man that would really like to come back and show Miami that they made a mistake that uh, he didn't get to be a starter here. But as you can see, Miami has continued to win. And where he's went, they haven't done as well. You don't think Miami did make a mistake. After all, the man that beat him out was Gino Toretta, who won a Heisman Trophy uh, that year. And Dennis Erickson uh, has made few mistakes in evaluating his talent. But Brian Forte losing out in that preseason celebrated battle a few years back with Toretta. Well, I think anytime you're looking for your quarterback, you're looking for your leader, there's quite a few things that take, take precedence over the throwing. And that's the ability to lead. And Gino Toretta did a great job of that. We're seeing this young kid, Ryan Collins, do the same thing. And I have to be off to... Dennis Erickson for knowing what it takes to keep a program winning the way he's done. Well, Dennis Erickson and Doug Graber shake hands. Dennis Erickson stays perfect at the Orange Bowl and unblemished in November. 31-17, your final score. Back for our post-game show in just a moment. Hoping to win convincingly to at least maintain their number three ranking. Let's go down to the field where Mr. Sideline Joe Rose is standing by. Dennis Erickson was very upset about the way his team won today. Something you wouldn't expect, but although they did win by 14 points, it wasn't a very impressive 14 points. And let's face it now, with the coalition polls, it's so important to win big. Dennis Erickson knew he needed a big one. He didn't get it. They may drop down two, maybe three spots in the poll. All they could do next week is go to West Virginia. They need a big game. They need to win by at least 14 on the road to jump back up and have a chance to play for the national championship on that final day. But overall, I think Dennis just realizes with this young team, 
They just don't get up for teams that they're supposed to blow out. It happened again today. It's been great working with you guys. Hope I see you guys soon. I know I'll see Nat Moore. Eric, good job on the uh, with your Heat basketball team. You got them on a hot streak. Back to you guys. All right. Thanks very much, Joe Rose. Pleasure working with you as well. Miami Dolphins Magazine, Monday night. Paul Kennedy, your host. Ron Heller and Jarvis Williams of the Dolphins, your guest at 7 o'clock. Well, this afternoon, Miami beats Rutgers. James Stewart gains 107 yards, 14 carries. Ryan Collins, 279 yards and a couple of touchdowns. For Nat Moore, this is Eric Reed. Good night, everybody.